Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto became an utterly gutsy shinobi. Naruto knew something was up the moment he landed in the strange forest, being sucked into the sky should have been his first clue. How's a shinobi supposed to adapt to such a strange new environment? Easy, one step at a time. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 4, The Girl with the Kate Shelter Tattoo Naruto blinked once as his mind readjusted to the unfamiliar ceiling. It was normal for his body to do this, having been on the move a lot in the past few years. He supposed it was better to get used to this one, he was going to be here for a while. Covering his mouth as a yawn escaped him, Naruto took a momentary glance around the guest room. Well, his room now. It was spartan in design, more functional and practical than the homey vibe he got from Wendy's room. Still, it was more than enough for him. Besides, he could always find a few odds and ends to spruce up the place. The blonde got up, giving his body a slight stretch as he did. His mind went over the events leading up to the last few days. Honestly, he hadn't expected Chief Rubal to accept him into the guild so, e so easily. He was under the impression that it took a lot more to enter, like some sort of feat of strength or trial to prove his worth, but all it took was a few words and he was in. Naruto reached for his black undershirt which he had draped over the backrest of a chair, having allowed it to air out overnight. He really needed to something about his lack of clothes. Thankfully, Magna had asked him to drop by to help him with his little situation. Opening the door to his room, he sneaked a peek out the corridor. There were no outward signs that indicated his new roommates were awake, they must like to sleep in, or maybe it was just his unnatural body clock. Throwing a final glimpse at the door to Wendy's bedroom, he left the house, remembering to step over that particularly squeaky wooden floorboard he had discovered last night. Once outside, Naruto couldn't stop that small sigh of contentment as the warmth of the sun's rays washed over him. A few of the other members were already out and about, carrying wicker baskets on their backs as they walked off towards the forested areas. He greeted them with a small smile and a friendly wave, something which the others returned. Knowing that their house was pretty remote clustered in a row of houses a good distance away from the guild he decided to walk the scenic route to fully take in the sights of the hamlet. Banners displaying the insignia of the guild in a wide array of colors, large empty ceramic vases left off to the front of the houses, and the occasional wooden sculptures in varying degrees of poses were just some of the oddities that caught his eye. As he stopped to stare at the tall wooden structure behind the guild, a voice called out to him. You are the new member, yes? Naruto turned towards the direction of the booming voice where a hulking, black-haired man sat on a crate. He wore next to nothing except for the, for the brown fur boots and tattered old cloth that covered his nether regions. The man's black eyes never left his as he continued to sharpen the steel bit of his large axe with a thick piece of whetstone. Yeah, Naruto Uzumaki. I never saw you at the guild last night. How could he have not? The man stood up, swinging the large axe that was as tall as him and securing it behind his back. At his full height, he practically dwarfed Naruto. He held out a large, calloused hand to the shinobi. I am Grognak, the giant said simply, pointing his gaze heavenwards. Nice to meet you. Naruto tried not to wince as the force behind the handshake caught him unaware, Grognak certainly had one hell of a grip. Not wanting his hand to be crushed by the other man, he equaled the handshake. You have a strong grip and eyes the eyes of a warrior. The barbarian let out a roaring laugh, scaring a few birds that were resting in the nearby trees. It is rare to meet a young warrior with such strong eyes. He patted Naruto on the back, causing Naruto to lurch forward before the man guided him into the guild tent. Come, brother, let us check the request boards. Right. Rubal had mentioned the boards to him previously, but it had totally slipped his mind in his haste to make up with Wendy last night. As they entered the guild tent fully, Naruto noticed, with growing alarm, just how quiet the place was. There were only a few scattered people lazing around the mess hall. 
Uh, Grognak San, where is everyone? The towering mage paused in his steps, rumbling under his breath, something which Naruto took for an indication that the man was listening. I have deemed you as my brother now. Please do not feel the need to be so formal. You may call me Grog, young warrior. Well, he said, smiling. I suppose you can call me Naruto too. If Grognak had heard him, he sure didn't act like it as he surveyed the tent. To answer your question, the rest are off to gather materials for our trade. Trade? We are a guild only in name, young warrior. Grognak ignored the small, small, depressed groan at the use of Naruto's new title. Our guild is made up of descendants of the ancient Nerva tribe. As such, we tend to shy away from the other towns. This is a reason why we receive so few mission requests. To compensate, the rest began to fabricate crafts of our local culture to sell to the other towns. Oh, so that mean Wendy is from this Nervid tribe as well. Grognak shook his head, the act causing his long black hair to swish over his bulky shoulders. Wendy is not of the Nervid tribe. Much like you, she is an outsider who joined our guild four years ago. Outsider, ha. Huh? The tall man was startled by his reply, perhaps aware that his words may have been a bit too blunt. It was not meant to be a derogatory comment. I apologize if it may have sounded that way, but that is what we refer to those who are not of the tribe. Oh, okay then, Naruto said. So, is that what you do around here too? Grognak chuckled heartily, but there was fire in his eyes as he spoke, no, much like you, I live for the thrill of battle. Though at times like this, I am his eyes flashed at the barren mission request boards, simply unemployed. He frowned, taking another look around the almost desolate tent. Does this happen a lot? Grognak closed his eyes, stroking his chin thoughtfully. Not necessarily. At any given month, we receive an average of 20 requests, but admittedly, it has been a slow month. I myself have not found a suitable one yet this month. Naruto rubbed the back of his neck. Had he really made the right choice in joining this guild? How was he going to survive here? It wasn't like he had any other skills besides fighting. More importantly, would staying here really help him return home? Without thinking, he bit the inside of his cheek, already considering the other option. Should he just leave? But do not be troubled, brother. Grognak said, a panicky tone seeping into his booming voice. There are other ways that you can earn jewels. Why, I can teach you the ways of the hunt. You would be amazed at what some of the merchants in the other towns would pay you for finely skinned pelt. Naruto frowned. That so? Grognak slung an arm over his shoulder, pulling him away from staring longingly at the mission request boards. I'm sure a request will turn up soon. After all, we can never know what tomorrow will bring us. The man raised his free arm, as if reaching out to some imaginary horizon. I guess. Good. Grognak forced out a bellowing laughter, dragging him towards one of the tables in the tent. Let me introduce you to some of the other mages. With a forceful shove, he pushed the blonde into the unoccupied seat. Greetings, bravest warriors of Kate Shelter. Meet our newest brother and member, Naruto Uzumaki. A light blue-haired woman with strange facial markings, shaped in the form of odd rectangles adorning her forehead and cheeks, eyed him. A small spark of recognition reached her eyes. She ducked her head down, making the cowl of her large cloak cover her features in the shadows and away from his gaze. Next to her, the block-headed man that was resting his head in his arms groaned, massaging the nerves under his short ponytail in annoyance. He leveled an annoyed look at the giant, displeased that he had interrupted his cat nap. Do you have to be so loud so damn early in the morning? The black-haired man asked, before turning his attention to Naruto. We've met. Oh, wait. He remembered this guy from last night. You're Busk San. The man scoffed. Yeah, and you're that kid who cleaned me out in the races yesterday. Thanks for that, the missus tore me a new one when I got home.
His hand snaked to his lower back as he straightened into his seat. Ended up sleeping in that stupid, lumpy couch last night. Sorry about that. Naruto hoping that his apology would appease the grumpy man. It wasn't his fault that his turtle was faster. Ma, it's all right. The ponytailed man waved his hand dismissively, a small smirk growing in return. I can just win it back from you in the next race. You'd better not skip out. Placing a false cheer, Naruto smiled at the older man. Like hell he was going to lose all the jewels he earned from the races, it easily covered up his expenses, and then some over the past two weeks. Judging from the poor inflow of requests, gambling was beginning to look like his only source of income. With a final nod at Busk, Naruto turned to the oddly silent woman. Ah, uh, I didn't get the chance to introduce myself last night, my name is. Naoki, she murmured, interrupting him. The woman took a small glance at the blonde before turning away again, clutching the small cup of tea tighter in her hands. If he hadn't seen her lips move, Naruto could have sworn that the quiet murmur was just a breeze drifting in the tent. Nice to meet you, Naoki-san. As time dragged on, he could feel the awkward tension thicken. He twisted in his chair, pointing at the request boards behind him. Are you guys waiting for a mission to show up too? Naruto could honestly appreciate how his village operated. It helped that Kanoha was one of the five great powers, but to think of the administrative duties the others had to handle when it came to mission requests back home, he was glad he just had to show up and there was a mission available, but here. Was this, was this how it felt to be in one of the minor villages? Lazing around until something came up? Yeah, it's been about a week since something came in. Busk yawned, not bothering to cover his mouth as he did. Hum, something will come in eventually, and when it does he slammed his hands on the table, causing his mug to teeter, it's off to the races again. To his left, Grognak narrowed his eyes in disapproval. Perhaps you should cut back, Busk. You've been losing a lot recently. Nah, that just means that my windfall's gonna come soon. I can feel it in my bones, Grog. This next race is going to be the one, Busk trailed off as he noticed the skeptical looks around the table, causing his lips to curl in vexation. Bah, you'll see, he said, standing. I'm gonna get going. The wife asked me to head to Diligent to get some supplies. Without even acknowledging anyone at the table, he strode towards the entrance, a sheet of paper clenched in his hand. Grognak rumbled under his breath. Turning to the blonde, the man placed a hand on his shoulders, smiling. I must apologize, Naruto, but if you would excuse me, it appears that there is a pressing matter that I need to attend to. Naruto blinked oulishly before responding, no problem. Grognak nodded, immediately on Busk's trail as he rushed out of the tent, all the while under the watchful gaze of the guild master. Naruto took another glimpse around the tent, the whispers from the other members reaching his ears as they failed to be discreet in looking at him. He resisted the urge to sigh, chalking it up to the fact that he was the new guy here. Naruto tried to block out the stares and murmurs as he smiled at the silent woman, saying the first thing on his mind. Have you had breakfast yet? Naoki remained silent, ducking her head down again, as her hands albeit shaking remained glued onto the teacup like a lifeline. Wendy looked at the obstacle standing in the way of her objective, bouncing on the balls of her feet. What if, what if he's still sleeping? Sleeping. She whispered. Then the logical thing to do would be to knock on his door. Wendy shushed her, placing her forefinger over her lips. Not so loud, Carla. We could be disturbing him. That would save us the hassle of waking him up. Wendy glanced back at the door again, frowning. She fiddled with her hands. He might be grumpy. Wendy didn't like the look Carla was giving her. It was like when she wandered off into the forest without telling her, or when she wanted to sleep in for just five more minutes. That look did not bode well for her. She reached up and rapped on the door. Apparently, it was too soft for Carla's taste, judging from the way she crinkled her nose. And Naruto, she called out. There was no response. Naruto. 
The door was nudged open just enough for Wendy to sneak a peek in. She had forgotten that the door knob for the guest room was loose, she really should tell Naruto that later. Meanwhile, Carla had taken the initiative to barge in. Not far behind her, Wendy followed suit, whispering for the small cat to come back outside. He's not here, Carla said, looking around the room for anything out of the ordinary. He must have left. Wendy's hands shot up to her mouth, her face etched in shock. Eh? No, I meant the house, Carla said, rolling her eyes, not that the young girl saw it. He must be at the guild tent. I'm sure that some of the members would have seen him. Oh. Her eyes kept glancing back at the entrance to their home, just in case Naruto came back. After all, she didn't want him to think that they were snooping around. Imagine what would happen if he caught them in his room. She swallowed. Maybe, we should leave now. It didn't help that Carla ignored her as she continued to rummage around the room. She was in the midst of drawing open the panels to his wardrobe. Wardrobe. Carla. Wendy rushed over with the intent to scoop the stubborn cat into her arms. Carla didn't resist like she normally would, instead both of their attention were drawn to tattered orange jacket inside the wardrobe. Carla raised a brow at the piece of clothing. I wonder why he's still hanging on to this thing. Ah, maybe it was given by someone close to him? Could be. Carla said distractedly. You're right. We should leave. Wendy nodded, closing the panels of the wardrobe. She glanced around the room to check that everything was as it should be, just to ensure there were no outward signs of their intrusion. Not finding any, she marched out of his room, not breaking her stride until they were both out of the house. Let's not do that again, Carla, Wendy whispered into her companion's ear. Carla hummed a quiet agreement. As they headed towards the guild intent on finding their wayward roommate a few of the members called out to her, greeting her with their usual smiles, but it was Magna that drew her attention. The elderly woman was struggling to carry a large box that covered the upper half of her body, it was only by her usual striking outfit from the waist down that Wendy was able to identify her. Magna. Wendy called out, rushing over to the woman and releasing Carla in the process. She positioned herself at the other end, sharing the burden. The woman's laughter was muffled. Why thank you, dear. These old bones weren't what they used to be. Uff. Where are you going? Your house, dear. These are just some of the old clothes my husband used to wear. I thought that the newest youngin would like to have a look at it. Nabura only knows how long he's been wearing his old clothes. Seeing a chance to help the duo, Carla volunteered to locate their roommate, to which the elderly woman expressed her gratitude with a smile. Smile. Soon enough, they arrived at the house, setting the box inside their living room with a certain degree of difficulty, the door being the main obstacle. Would you like something to drink? Wendy asked, wiping the small beads of sweat forming on her brow. No need, dear. The elderly matron took a small glance around their modest home, before settling a knowing look at Wendy. How is your new roommate? I hope everything's going smoothly. Wendy ducked her head down, embarrassed by the sudden inquiry. Everything's fine. Um, we had a talk last night so. Suddenly, she found the wooden floor very interesting. Magna smiled in relief. I'm glad to hear that. He seems like a sweet young boy, I'm sure he didn't mean to be rude. Why yeah? Not long afterwards, the sound of the door opening drew their attention, as Naruto entered the household with the small form of Carla trailing after him. He grinned, scratching the side of his head. Sorry, I wanted to meet you the first thing in the morning, but I didn't know where you lived. It's all right, Magna said. Holding her back as she bent over to rummage through the contents, her voice echoed in the box, I thought you might want to have a look through some of my husband's clothes. It's a little old, but still wearable. She held up a vest, holding it against his shoulders. This used to be Pell's old hunting gear. He looked so strapping in it back then. Magna extended her fingers as she measured the length between the crook of his neck and his arm, clucking her tongue. 
It's slightly big now, but I'm sure you'll grow into it just fine, she said, patting his shoulders as she tried to pick off the stray threads clinging onto the material. Not wanting to be left out of the fun, Wendy reached inside the large box, her legs dangling in the air as she delved into the mass of clothes. She grabbed the first thing that caught her eye, a brightly colored poncho similar to the ones that were worn by some of the members back when she first joined Kate's shelter. Ah, Naru Naruto, try this on. Now that looks familiar. I remember how Pell used to wear that, Magna sighed, closing her eyes in remembrance. Ah, to be young again, she told them. Go ahead. Let's see how it fits. His smile strained, Naruto ultimately cowed. Sure, but is it all right for you to give me all this, Magnusan? All these clothes have been gathering dust in storage. It'd be better if someone got some use out of them. Besides, it's not like people will ever use these again. Seeing Naruto's confused look, Magna clarified for him, time has not been kind on my dear old husband. You look nice, Naruto, Wendy said, blushing. Naruto smiled at her. Really? What is this? What's with you youngins nowadays? Have you never seen a poncho before? These things were really popular back then, Magna said. Now then, I should let you three be. The others should already be back with the supplies. Oh, and remember if there's anything you need, don't hesitate to ask. Naruto reached out a hand to stop her. Ah, could you wait for just a minute, Magnusan? Wendy watched as the older boy rushed into his room, having already guessed what he was about to take. Maybe she was right, perhaps his orange jacket held sentimental value to him. It didn't take him long to return with his tattered jacket. Wendy mentioned you were really good at sewing, Naruto said. I really don't want to bother you so much, but could you help me mend this jacket? When you have the time, I mean. Of course, dear. Smiling warmly, Magna gave it a quick look over, tooting as she examined the individual cuts. You must have been in a pretty serious scrap. Well, you could say that. It got caught on those thorny vines that snapped at you when I was cutting through the forest. You were in the evil forest? Magna asked, tooting. I don't see a problem with this. With just the right shade of orange and some black threads, I could have it done within a couple of days. Naruto brightened. Really? Thanks, Magnusan, and for the clothes too. Oh, think nothing of it. She held the jacket under an arm, waving as she stepped out of their house. Goodbye, dearies. Don't forget to come down to the guild tent whenever you're hungry. I'll make Pell whip something up for you in a jiff. Wendy returned the wave as the woman left to head back to her station. The older boy next to her copied the gesture with gusto. His lips were twitched upwards in a sincere smile, accentuating the whiskers' marks on his cheeks. She had never really noticed it before, but turned away before she was caught staring, looking around for Carla as an excuse. Where was she anyway? As if answering the question, the cat's head popped out from the large box, pushing away the flaps. She was holding onto a piece of clothing. With a deadpan stare, Carla held it out to Naruto. This one next. Naruto found himself lazing on the couch in their living room. The duo had subjected him to an arduous makeover session, as they went through each and every article of clothing in that damn box, all of which had been organized inside his now full wardrobe. A makeover wasn't the most enjoyable thing he could imagine doing this afternoon, but he complied with their wishes, knowing it was futile to resist. In the end, he settled for wearing what he had worn before, which the two didn't necessarily approve, but never really hated at first glance either. That was good enough for him. The hunting vest was nostalgic to wear, modeled in the same design as the standard chunin attire back home, maybe a few shades of green different. The material was softer and thinner and the vest fell a bit off his shoulders, but like Magna had said, it was still wearable. The strange chef must have been a little bit huskier back then as compared to, to his lean build now. He wore the poncho over it. It helped that the poncho had splotches of orange mixed with the red, white and beige patterns. 
Carla had said that it would help him to blend in with his guildmates since his old clothes made him look like an outsider. Naruto absent-mindedly fingered the small cage shelter's crest above the left breast pocket. It felt nice to have something reminding him of his village, even if it was just a simple piece of clothing. That was why he was a little antsy over the condition of his jacket. It was one of the few things he had left to remind him of his home, especially since it was given to him by Jiraiya Shursho. What's that you're reading? Naruto asked, noticing the young girl flip through a magazine in her hands. Wendy perked up, happy at the distraction. It seems she was getting bored at the stifling silence as well. It's the weekly sorcerer, she said, holding up the cover depicting a female mage in a scantily dressed outfit, holding onto an odd wooden stick in between her thighs. Naruto tried not to jump to conclusions. It's a gossip rag, Carla said sourly. It's not so bad. Wendy held out the well-worn copy to him, it looked like she reread it quite a bit. The issue is a couple of weeks old, but you can still read it if you want. He felt his jaw lock. Wendy was coming dangerously close to his dirty secret. Well, one of his dirty secrets anyway. He waved it away a bit too eagerly, something which the small cat noticed. Nah, he told her. It's fine. Why don't you want it? Carla asked suspiciously. I don't really read such things. It's not just about gossip. There's other stuff in here too. Wendy flipped through the pages, stopping at an article that showed a backdrop of the continent. There's even information about recent mage activities. Maybe later, Naruto said, standing. I have other stuff I need to. Carla was having none of it. Taking the offered magazine out of Wendy's hands, she held out the article in front of him. What does this say? Naruto squinted, feigning nearsightedness as he leaned in. The jig was up. He knew there was no other way out of this predicament. An honest man would have stood up and admit his failings, and in doing so, he would gain the respect of his peers. Sadly, this was a shame that went beyond what Naruto could bear. I. Ah, uh, lost my glasses. Seeing the looks of disbelief directed his way, he snatched the magazine from the small cat, gripping it tight as he stared at the foreign words. Fine, I can't read this stupid thing. Wendy shirked back. Why you can't read? I can read. Naruto spluttered, pointing at the large font of the article header. Just not, whatever this is. Naruto reached for the ceiling scroll in his pants, knowing that his master's book would help to elaborate his point. He activated the scroll, releasing the book and sadly, his used underwear which he had forgotten to remove, much to the amazement of his roommates. W what is that? Carla asked. He scowled at her, hiding the offending article behind him. It's just underwear. No. I mean how did you do that? Oh right. Naruto realized his mistake immediately. Maybe it was too much expect this world to know the art of Fuinjutsu. Eh, it wasn't like they were going to get it anyway, so he lied. Mag magic. He held out his master's book to stop the inevitable protest from the grumpy cat. I'm more familiar with these types of characters. The duo brought their heads together, leaning in to examine the book. From the stump look on their faces, it appeared that they couldn't make heads or tails of it. I've never seen anything like this before. Carla? No, but I've heard stories about ancient languages used sparsely in some of the other kingdoms. Carla paused, handing the book back to him. Are you from one of them? Yeah, he said distractedly. At least he could pass off as someone from these other kingdoms if anyone got a little curious about him. He would have to learn more about them, but ancient languages? That piqued his interest, he had never heard about such a thing. Is there anyone else you know that can read these ancient languages? Wendy shook her head. Maybe you could try asking Chief Rubal? Naruto filed that information away for the moment, he didn't want to be too hasty and divulge anything about his origins. Not until he was sure that he could trust these people with his life.
Hey ah, Naruto, Wendy said. Carla and I could help too, you know. Naruto looked at her strangely. Help with what? The young girl fiddled with her dress. I have some of the old books that I kept around when Chief Rubal taught me how to. Naruto blinked once. Oh. He was grateful that Wendy was doing her best from uttering out the dreaded or word. Turning to Carla, he found that she was as impassive as ever, but she acknowledged him with a small nod. Naruto looked away, hoping that they won't see how embarrassed he was. If the guys back home knew he was getting tutored to learn how to read from a young girl and her cat, they would flip out. His wor words were barely audible as he gritted out. Okay. Eh? I I didn't catch that. Carla merely waved her off. It's okay, Wendy. I heard it just fine. She turned to the dragon slayer, a small smirk adorning her lips. Go get the books. The coloring ones in particular. We should get started. Apparently, Wendy didn't catch the insult. Okay, she said, her eyes glimmering with excitement. Don't worry, Naruto. We'll get you reading in no time. Naruto sighed as he watched the girl dash into the room, intent on picking out her reading books. He purposely looked away from Carla, knowing that smug smile of hers would only rile him up further. He was beginning to regret telling them he was unable to read, even though it was a handicap he knew he had to address sooner or later. The cat's small giggles drew his attention again. Eyes twitching madly, he did the only thing he could think of. He threw the boxers in his hand at her head. Her small shriek of disgust was like music to his ears. H how dare you, you uncouth. We're here. The dark-haired girl interrupted. Wendy stared at her roommates that trailed after her. Whatever had happened in that brief time when she went into her room had these two bickering like an old married couple. Carla was tight-lipped about the incident. When she turned to Naruto, he would only give a smile and point at the feline. It only infuriated her longtime companion further. So, this is where you usually train? Naruto asked. Wendy nodded in reply. A couple of hours into their study session, the older boy had declared that he was bored, something his clones had readily agreed with. At first, she was alarmed when they disappeared around their small living room, but Naruto had explained the workings behind his clone magic. Wendy was amazed, to say the least. He was just so powerful. She couldn't believe, believe that he was still able to learn wind magic, and that odd thing he did with that scroll. Just what else could he do? Curious, she suggested showing him around the area, this place in particular. It was a large clearing in the small clumps of trees located atop the cliffs, behind the guild tent. She had discovered this place just a few months prior. After asking for permission from Chief Rubal, it became one of the few places she frequented to practice her dragon slayer magic. Not that she was any good. Naruto walked up to the tree closest to him, leaning in close and wrapping his knuckles against the thick trunk, it was as if he was testing the quality of the trees. He closed his eyes and nodded sagely. This is a good place to a uh, train. Thank you. Wendy chose not to question his strange methods. Maybe it was a common practice where he came from, and the last thing she wanted to do was to insult his traditions. Idiot, Carla said. Wendy cast a suspicious eye between the two. It certainly looked like their relationship was progressing further than she had thought. So, Wendy, Naruto said. You never really explained how your dragon slayer magic worked. Aya, my magic isn't as good as yours. He waved her off, saying, don't be like that. I'm sure it's awesome. Right, Carla-chan? Carla ignored the jibe, but still nodded at his question. It is one of the most powerful magic I have ever seen, few could compare to having one as strong as hers. Wendy ducked her head down. It wasn't that great. Carla was always exaggerating. How could her simple support magic compare to Naruto's clones? Even Carla had mentioned that he looked like a capable close combat mage, nothing like her at all. 
Come on, if you'll show me what you can do, I can show you one of my techniques. Really? You'll show us your wind magic? Naruto shrugged, appearing nonplussed. I don't see why not. That sounded like a fair deal. The young girl fiddled with her hands. She had never shown her magic to any more asides from Carla and Chief Rubal. Maybe it was better to start with one of the spells that she was most familiar with, it was the first spell Grandine had taught her. Her. Fast winds that run the heavens. Wendy held her hands out as she began the incantation, feeling the familiar rush of wind as her magic manipulated the surrounding air. Her magic seal appeared before her, shining a soft blue as the glow encompassed her body. Vernier. A soft, rustling wind was the only thing that could be heard in the clearing. Naruto looked around. Ah, uh, what is it supposed to do? W8. So sorry. Wendy chastised herself. Her nerves had gotten the better of her once more. She had to work fast before the effects of her spell faded, it was one of the shortcomings that she was hoping to overcome with practice. In the blink of an eye, she covered the short distance between Carla and her, scooping the small cat into her arms. Carla yelped, irritated that she had suddenly become a part in her demonstration. Feeling mischievous, she rushed forward to round up behind Naruto, hoping to spook him. Boo! Only to scare an empty space. Great. A hand patted her on her head, startling her enough to let out a frightened eep. You're almost as fast as me. Wendy looked behind her, seeing the grin on Naruto's face shattered what little confidence she had in her abilities. The gap between them was too great. There was no way she could compare to him. Naruto tousled her hair. What's with that face? You know what I would have given to be as powerful as you when I was eleven? He said, puffing his cheeks out at her. I was still fooling around in school at that age. She's nine, Carla said lazily. That's even better. You must be some kind of prodigy or something. W what do you mean? His hand snaked to the back of his head, looking uncomfortable as he turned away. Well, I was pretty awful when I was a kid, but I started to shape up, up when I realized I had to get stronger to protect the people close to me. People close to you? Naruto shook his head. It's a pretty long and complicated story. Just as she was about to question him further, he waved her off. His gesture left no room to rebut, so she left it alone. Now's not the time for it. Besides, I owe you a demonstration, don't I? I'm going to show you the same thing I saw when I first started out my wind magic training. He reached into his pouch, pulling out two of his kunai. Much like a magician performing a trick, he held it out to the her and Carla, letting them examine the odd knife. Granted, I'm not as good as a suma sensei when using these things, but I'm pretty decent. He rubbed the tip of his nose. The small grin on his lips did not help his facade to remain humble. With a deft flick of his wrist, the kunai sailed across the clearing, embedding itself in the tree a few meters away. That's it? That's your wind magic? Carla, it's still pretty good, Wendy said, but found herself frowning. From everything she had assumed of Naruto's prowess, she expected more. Naruto just laughed it off. No, that's just what would happen if I use my strength. This he held up the second kunai, twirling it around by the ring, this is what happens when I combined it with my wind element. A translucent blue energy began to form over the blade as he channeled the element into the kunai. With another simple flick, he threw it at the same tree just a few inches off to the left than where the last one was marked. The kunai easily pierced through the tree, bypassing another before burying itself into the third, right up to the hilt. That was, was just a teaser, Naruto said. So, I didn't put too much into it. The real thing is a lot more dangerous. Wow. Wendy murmured. Her features then twisted into a small, jealous pout. I wish I could do something as powerful as that. Eh? What are you talking about? She hesitated for a moment before explaining, you see, I'm only good at support magic. 
Carla seemed to disagree as the feline smacked her forearm. Nonsense, how many times must I say that magic is not all about brawn? She admonished, turning back to Naruto. Wendy is able to use one of the most powerful healing magic this world has ever seen. That is why she is known as the Sky Dragon Slayer. Naruto eyed her with approval. You're so young, and you already have such a cool nickname. When I was your age, people just called me dead last. B but how can they? You're so strong. Eh. He dismissed it again with a noncommittal shrug. Like I said, it's a long and boring story, but I trained hard to get to where I am today. Slowly, some of them began to change their opinions of me. It didn't happen overnight. That's right, the exceed in her arms said. You're expecting too much to happen in such a short amount of time. Even I can see that your Tenri and no Hoku has improved thanks to your training. Naruto perked up. Sky Dragon's roar? That sounds cool. Wendy stilled. How did Carla know about that? Wendy had made doubly sure to practice the attack in secret. She wasn't really proud of that particular attack, its power barely being able to shake a tree branch, much alone compared to the raw, visceral power of Grandine's roar. It's nothing. She yelled. Carla, Carla, as always, had other ideas. It's an exceptionally powerful attack that separates a normal mage from a real dragon slayer. That's so? Naruto said. Then, why are you embarrassed about it? It's because she's having troubles with. Wendy clamped a hand over the cat's mouth, her face red, not in anger, but from embarrassment. Carla, stop talking. The older boy smiled, snapping his hands as some sudden realization reached him. Aha. That's your first problem. You should never be ashamed to ask someone for help. There's nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time. Maybe that's because you're unintelligent, Carla forced out through the cracks of the young girl's hands. Her voice was muffled but they could still make it out clearly, the cat couldn't resist the small dig at the blonde. Thanks for that, Naruto said darkly, before refocusing on Wendy. But really, if you want, I can help you out. You'll, help me? Yeah, think of it as a way of paying you back for the uh, you know he made a motion with his head, obviously referring to his remedial reading classes, besides, I've always wanted a cute apprentice of my own. Maybe this was how my master felt about me. As he looked to the cloudy skies, a small sigh escaped his lips. Was I this wide-eyed when I was twelve? Excitement bubbled in her chest at the idea of receiving training from someone as powerful as Naruto. Her eagerness gave way to hesitance, and she stilled when she noticed the look he was giving her. Now's a good time as any time start, Naruto said, grinning. Come on, show me what you've got. Perhaps she was biting off more than she can chew. So, like I said, just try to visualize what you want it to do, then do it. Naruto paused, frowning. I know it doesn't sound helpful now, but you'll get it, give it some time. That's how my master taught me and look how I turned out. Hmm, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Naruto, Naruto rounded on Carla, saying, that's enough snippy comments from you. I won't have you bad-mouthing my master. I'll have you know that he trained my... Wendy tried to pull away from the bickering duo, walking with longer strides, so that she would reach the guild tent first. It was more out of hunger and exhaustion than desperation to get away from them. It had been a week since Naruto first arrived. True to form, he was beginning to fit in with the rest of the guild, especially with Carla. That particular relationship had blossomed, and despite the bickering, she knew it was just Carla's way of making him feel welcomed. It certainly was an odd way to do so. Still, Wendy felt that she had gotten closer to Naruto over the past few days. His easygoing and cheerful nature made him more fun to hang around with than Carla, though she would never mention that out loud. Although, she could do less with the training, but it was for her own good, and Naruto would not have anything less. She was amazed at the variety of spells and the power he wielded in his magic. 
Yet, the older boy had once told her that it was not the full extent of his abilities, saying that it was too dangerous to be used for a simple demonstration. And he became one of the most powerful men in RV. Maybe she could walk just a bit faster. The warm, comforting glow of the guild tent beckoned her, promising to soothe her ailing and tired limbs. Still, it didn't mean that she couldn't have a little snack first. Wendy pulled her mouth wide open, gulping down on the refreshing summer air, which only made it more delicious because of the cool weather. It always tastes better at night or after a heavy rainfall, with that cool, minty tang. But she had never tasted the air during a hurricane. Or how about a desert? What would that taste like? Best, period. Naruto said with a huff as soon as they entered the guild tent. Wendy didn't hesitate to dash to an unoccupied table, seeing the form of people carry a tray of dishes in his hands as he waddled towards them. She was grateful that Magna had asked the chef to prepare their meals beforehand. Why look at the lot of ye, making a ruckus as soon as you're inside, people said as he placed their meals in front of them. Why I'll have ye know when you're as old as me, ye tend to his eyes clouded over before snapping out of it as soon as it happened. And that's the story about why we used to put onions down our pants to ward off the fleas. He smiled down at them. Have a good meal, you little scamps. Wendy giggled into her hands. She knew that the chef wasn't senile, it was a running gag they had since she first joined the guild. As always, his antics did not fail to put a smile on her face. You know, I think there's something wrong with him, Naruto said in between bites. He tried to kill me again the last time we talked. Wendy choked on her water as she recalled the incident. Now, that had been funny, and maybe a bit dangerous too. I can't imagine why, Carla drawled. Fine, fine, I'll stop talking. Although he never did, but it was still infinitely better than eating in silence. Eventually, the others joined in, doing their best to keep up their conversation with Naruto. Their new roommate found every single thing here interesting. Apparently, even down to. I didn't know you could do it like that, he said as a small blush latched onto his cheeks. Neither did I brother, but we learn new and strange things every day. Very, very strange things, he said, a knowing wisdom laced in his tone. You will never know what knowledge will be bestowed upon us tomorrow. I still find it dumb, Busk said sleepily. It just won't work, I tell ya. Wendy felt left out to be honest. She had absolutely no idea what they were talking about. Even if she asked, Carla would snap at them not to. No one messed with Carla when she got snappy. Wendy, Naoki whispered, her eyes shifting around the table as she leaned into her ear. How's your training? The, drag the dragon slayer answered with a tired smile. At least someone was willing to put up with her. It's going great. It wasn't that the woman was purposely blasé, she was just timid. Wendy knew that Naoki always preferred short replies. Any more than that, the woman would clamp down and drink tea excessively. It had freaked Naruto out when she did that the first time he met her. The older boy had confided in her that he was still antsy around the blue-haired woman because of it. Just as she was to take another bite of people's roasted chicken parmesan, Chief Rubal cleared his throat. She hadn't noticed him sneaking up behind her. I have a surprise for you, Naruto, he said, smiling amiably. A surprise? Busk slammed his hands on the table, sending their mugs to teeter dangerously. I knew it. You're going to change the races to a weekly thing, aren't ya? I said it was a surprise for him, Busk, not for you. Damn it. Now as I was saying, Rubal said, pulling out a sheet of paper from behind him. It's a mission request from the town of Diligion. Thankfully, I was fast enough to register it for you before any of the other guilds could. Bus cut in, hey. Wait a minute, why the hell does he get special treatment? Oh. A first test for our brother, Grognak interrupted the ponytailed man, clapping Naruto on his back. It has been foretold in the stars that you will succeed in this endeavor. Naruto sneaked a quick peek at the request, smiling tightly. Even though he had made leaps and bounds in his studies, 
Wendy knew he couldn't just grasp the language immediately. Isn't this nice? He said with a small laugh. Why don't you have a look, Wendy? Wendy took it, snatching it away from his hands. She wasn't angry. She wasn't. But as she stared at the mission request, the indescribable look of, not, resentment in her eyes threatened to burn the paper on under her, not so, sharp gaze. Okay, maybe she was a little angry. It was a monster encounter request one of the more common mission types. The level of difficulty usually depended more on the clients. In this case, he was supposed to help clear out a stranded ship that, in the words of their client, had a malevolent spirit that wouldn't allow them to moor their ship at the wharf. The strange paranormal activity had forced the crew to abandon their ship just off the coast of Diligion. It was bound to be exciting. It sounds great, Naruto. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, Wendy said, plastering a fake smile as she handed the mission sheet back to him. Shmoyoho. Rubal cheered as he clapped his hands together. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the three of you are bound to succeed in your first official request as a recognized team of Kate Shelter. Wendy blinked olishly. I'm G going too? Why, of course, Wendy. Hasn't Naruto already told you? He was the only who brought up the idea to me in the first place. The boy in question shrugged, feigning disinterest. Meh, I assumed you knew. Slowly, Wendy turned to the last obstacle that would stop her from going, expectant eyes boring into Carla's own as hope and excitement bubbled in her chest. It was my idea in the first place, Carla said, throwing an annoyed look at Naruto. Don't go stealing my credit. Naruto shook his head, but just as he was about to retort, an ear-piercing shriek filled the tent. Kaya. My first mission. Omek, please insert self-insert. And so, the Hokage leapt off the cliff, not caring that he could die if he did so. Naruto paused, a budding sense of self-satisfaction swelled within him as he noted the young girl grimace in exasperation and annoyance. Naruto, don't stop there. When he whined, sitting up in her bed to reach out for his hand. I don't think I can wait until tomorrow night. He shrugged. Just as he was about to continue, a derisive snort coming from the small form at the other side of the bed cut him off. Something you don't like, Carla? Honestly? Carla scoffed. Where do I start? With a flick of her paw, the feline unsheathed her claws, much to the surprise of the other two occupants in the room. She ticked off a claw. First, this Hokage fellow of yours is unashamedly modest, yet incredibly powerful that people would herald him as a god. Second, your hero is so handsome that women instantly fall in love with him just by looking at him. Third, he's had such a tragic childhood, but we suddenly find out that he is somehow the long-lost son of the village leader and next in line for the coveted position? Carla was relentless. Fourth, sometime in that tragic childhood of his, he managed to master a musical instrument to the point where he captivates everyone with his singing. Don't get me even started on the... Shut up! Naruto hissed, clapping his hands over his ears. You're so stupid. I didn't ask you to listen. He started rocking back and forth. It's my story, my rules. If you don't like it, read listen to another story. He stood to leave, eyes clenching shut as he dashed out of the duo's bedroom. W wait, Naruto. Wendy called out to his retreating back. Don't listen to Carla. I really like your story. She gave chase. You never told us what happened to his relationship with Cheyenne and the other girls. Does that mean he'll have a hair? Luckily, she was cut off when Naruto slammed the door to his room with an emphatic bang. You didn't even get to the part where he faced off against Uchida. Chapter 5, The Curse of the Sea Tub Clarabella And what's, what's rule number one? Above all, always listen to your orders, Wendy intoned absently. She had repeated the rule ad nauseum all day today, but Naruto wouldn't relent on drilling it deep into her psyche. The moment they stepped into town however, she began to ignore him. 
Instead, her attention was transfixed on the bustling activity all around her. This was the first time that she had stepped into a town, so it was understandable that she was a bit distracted by her surroundings. It had always been her fondest wish to visit the port town of Diligen, especially after hearing the far-fetched stories about the strange wares being hawked and the oddity of the city people from some of the members. Although back then, she was beginning to think that the others were merely over-exaggerating but now. Wait. Did that sign just read ye old chocolate shop? They had a whole store just for chocolate. Oh, she was definitely stopping by there once they finished the request. Speaking of requests, Wendy couldn't believe that Chief Rubal finally allowed her to go on one. He had explained however that it was only because he trusted Naruto's judgment and ability to handle the prerequisites of the mission, and to protect her should things go awry. It was one of the few times she had seen him so serious. Her euphoria quickly died down. Wendy couldn't help but fret anxiously after his admission, praying for the successful outcome of their first mission and for their safety. She came to an uncomfortable truth, a mission might not be as fun as she first chalked it up to be. She had always thought it to be an adventure, but what was an adventure without risks? They were being paid to risk life and limb for its successful outcome. Would the client even care if one of them died? It was bad enough that Chief Rubal's unusually stern warning made her toss and turn at night, something that Carla had to address. As it turned out, the small cat wasn't angry, which made her blink. Carla had always enjoyed her sleep. Instead, the feline eased her anxiety by staying up late to talk, which turned into an odd sort of lecture, pointing out that no harm would befall them if Naruto stuck around. The dragon slayer didn't know that Carla's trust in him went so deep. That little fact alone calmed her down, ensuring that she had at least a few, decent hours of sleep before they began the trek south to Diligen. Wendy, are you even listening to me? Wendy nodded, tearing her eyes away from the glorious cascading fountain of melted cheese in one of the display windows of the stores. Sadly, its name ye old cheese shop was kind of uninspiring. Maybe it was a franchising thing. Ma'am, I'm listening. Okay. Naruto eyed her with a frown, perpetuating his words, what is it then? Rule number two is to always remember rule number one. That was just a lucky guess. Wendy tuned him out as he continued rambling about his other rules, which were basically there to reaffirm the first. She wasn't one to be rude, but the two of them had experienced the full blast of his insanity during the full day's walk on the road to Diligen. It was obvious that the Naruto got bored easily. Coupled with his incessant attempts to try and speed up the process, well, it had grated on Carla's nerves. However, Wendy didn't get a chance to find out what he meant as the exceed cut him off, rejecting whatever he had planned in his head. Look, Carla. Wendy pointed to the small cafe down the street with the cute and frilly pink concept. She knew it would pique her best friend's interest due to the cat's unholy fascination with tea. We're going there later, Carla whispered, glancing at the rambling blonde who was now gesturing wildly with his hands. Wendy knew what that look meant, the exceed didn't want him to come along. She didn't want to be mean, but there was a chance that Naruto wouldn't like it. It was more of a girl thing. Besides, she could always sneak, sneak over to the chocolate store once they were done. All that chocolate. Wait. Naruto blocked her path with his arm, stalling her. His eyes darted up and down the length of the street, features grim. This place looks familiar. I think I recognize this street. What are you talking about? Carla asked. I remember that shop. Naruto gestured to a bookstore just a few stores down from where they were. Back then, I thought it was weird that they had this cut-out cardboard figure that looked kinda like a ninja, but he was wearing this really strange black outfit that covered his whole body like a mummy. So. So, Naruto said, sending Carla a displeased look. That means that the Oasis Cafe should be somewhere near. You came back. The shrill scream pierced the stillness of the sleepy town, startling Naruto and interrupting him in mid-speech. Later, he would tell them that the act was reminiscent of when he first visited Diligen just a week ago. 
what am I saying? The woman said. Of course, you came back. A brunette in a skimpy bunny outfit rushed over to Naruto, who was too shocked to move an inch, sidling up next to him as she cuddled his arm against her chest. The woman rubbed her cheeks against his. It caused the blonde to pull back sharply, blushing a deep shade of red. Were you rejected by that guild? The woman asked, her honey-suckling tone sending shivers up Wendy's arms. Did you decide to come back and work for Yuchan, master? Wendy looked away, her cheeks flushing. Body stiff, she marched up to a random store front and stared intently at the items on display window. She didn't know Naruto had a girlfriend much less an older girlfriend. She didn't want to be a bother. That's what you'd call a SLU. Wendy clamped her hand over the cat's mouth before Carla was able to complete whatever she was trying to say. It wasn't right to badmouth his girlfriend. After all, they never met her before. Perhaps there was a re reason why she was dressed like that. Taking a risk, she glanced back at the awkward couple. Maybe there were some truths to what their guild members said about city people. Could you let me go now? Naruto said, squirming. You pouted, shaking her head against his, it caused him to splutter out some of her hair that got entangled in his lips. Only if you come back to work for me, Naruto she continued in that awful sing-song tone of voice. Seeing no other way, he used his hands to push her away from him, making doubly no, triply sure that he did not touch anything sensitive. People were milling around them, and he could clearly make out the faint whispers from the small crowd. It wasn't anything polite. Also, who knows where Wendy and Carla had run off to. He had lost sight of them during his brief lapse of concentration. He shuddered to think what would happen if he came back without them. Oh, Chief Rubal would tear him a new one. You wiggled her brows slyly. Getting frisky are we, master? Please get off me. I need to go find my friends. You did so, looking guilty. Isn't that them over there? She asked, pointing over to one of the shops nearby. The small crowd dispersed once it was apparent that their little intimate moment was over, but not before offering a few crude parting shots that Naruto ignored. Oi, Wendy. Carla. He waved them over. The girl in question glanced back at him before pulling her gaze away. From where he was standing, he could see that she was blushing, but the feline in her arms had no qualms about remaining ignorant. Carla narrowed her eyes at him, almost telepathically saying that he was going to get it from her later. Sighing, he rushed over to them, with you trailing not far behind him. Wendy remained oblivious, even though his reflection came up in the shop window. He frowned at it, knowing that she could see it too as he poked her on the shoulders. You shouldn't run off like that, Naruto said. Remember the rules? They're not for fun, you know. His attempted humor was shot down as Wendy ignored it. She smiled, though her eyes trailed wide to the woman that accompanied him. Naruto, I w was, wondering where you were. She wasn't a very good liar. Um, who's your friend? This is you. We met when I first came into town about a week ago. I is that so? Wendy nodded, blinking olishly. Well, Carla and I shouldn't be bothering you too. You must want to um, catch up and everything. We'll just walk around town in the meantime. She made the motion to leave, but he reached out to stop her. Where did you get the idea that you were bothering us? Two pairs of eyes peeked behind him, eyeing the brunette in the bunny suit. It was Wendy who blurted out a hasty reply, we just thought you might want to spend some time alone with your girlfriend so girlfriend? He didn't even dare to look behind at the supposed object of his affection. She's not my girlfriend. She's not. Two voices chorused in unison, the one in no small amount of surprise, and the other in a slight drawl. I'm not. The restaurateur ducked her chin down, pouting. The crestfallen look on her pretty face was amplified by her trembling bottom lip and the small pool of tears that gathered at the corner of her eyes. It was the same trick that got him into her restaurant and that ruckus the last time he was here. I 
I thought we had something special, Naruto, you choked out, hands flying up to cover her mouth as she bit back a small gasp. When you saved my life back then, I thought T that maybe, just maybe. Cut it out. Just like that, the meek facade vanished as the woman stuck her tongue out at Naruto. Seriously? You're no fun, Naruto. She pushed past him, crouching before the young girl with the white cat in her arms. Era, who do we have here? Don't tell me a guild actually accepted you already? Of course, they did. Naruto boasted with a certain measure of pride in his eyes. That's my apprentice, Wendy and well, her pet cat, I guess. His apprentice looked sheepish. Partner, actually. More like a casual acquaintance. You stifled a laugh. This one's a riot, she said, pointing at Carla. If you found a talking cat odd, she didn't comment on it. Turning her attention to Wendy, you tilted her head to one side, forehead creasing in thought. You know, if you were just a little bit older, we could draw on the Lilicon crowd. I'm sure it won't be that hard to find a costume to fit you. Arg. What the hell, you? Get away from her. The nerve of this brazen woman. Wendy looked around in alarm. Hey, uh, what are you guys talking about? Naruto shoved you away from her none too lightly too as he shielded Wendy from the restaurateur. It's nothing you need to know, he said to Wendy hurriedly. All right. Geez. Maybe it doesn't sound technically legal, but forgive a girl for trying to gain a competitive edge. You stood up, her umbrage giving way to her curiosity. Besides, what are you guys doing in town anyway? Oh. Nice new digs by the way, Naruto. I forgot to mention that. Naruto looked at her, still unconvinced. He was aware that she was trying to deflect and change the subject. We've got our first mission, he said, reaching inside his poncho for their mission request and held it to her. Her eyes skimmed through the request with practiced ease. Ha, huh, I've heard rumors about that thing around town lately, but I never actually went over to see it. Oh? Anything interesting? You shook her head. Not much. Some of the locals living near the harbor mentioned hearing strange wailing from across the waters. Creepy, but I don't think there's an actual threat for us in town. W wailing? Wendy asked. Even Carla looked worried. I'm sure it's nothing serious. After all, this is only a low-level mission, Naruto said. As long as I'm around, the two of you have nothing to worry about. He smiled, messing up Wendy's hair. That always seemed to calm her down. Instead, it got the desired effect from someone else. Hey, you said. Whenever you're done with your mission, be sure to stop by the cafe. I'm sure that I could work out a discount for the three of you. You know, for how you helped out last time. It's the least I could do. Naruto eyed her with suspicion. It was weird to see a reversal with this sudden giving nature of hers. In the brief time he had known her, she didn't look the type that would give without wanting something else in return. Naruto. Stop looking at me like that. Forgive a girl for trying to be nice once in a while. Okay? You sighed. Well then, I guess that settles it. I better get back to the store, the bunny woman said, making the motion to leave. Oh, I forgot. She snapped her fingers. Minori was looking for you a couple of days ago. Minori? Yeah, she said something about wanting to split the reward from the mission you guys did together. Mission? Naruto asked. I don't remember doing a mission with her. No, no. It turned out those thugs had a nifty reward on their heads, but since you guys technically stopped them without accepting the request, it was forfeited. Still, the client was more than happy to compensate you for your troubles. Really? That's great. Yeah, give me a sec. She's back in the restaurant. I'll go get her for you. You rushed back to the Oasis Cafe, knocking on the large display window to get Minori's attention. She waved at the girl in question, pointing him out to her. 
Minori was seated in the booth at the far left of the store, obscured slightly by a wall. She was looking bored and peeved as usual, her body language screamed defensive as she wrapped her arms around herself. She was tending to a male patron. The balding man was sweating as he ate, obviously perturbed by her presence. Naruto could sympathize. Her mood brightened when she saw him, not caring a bit as she walked out in the middle of her master's meal. She spoke with you at the entrance before the restaurateur took over for her, tending to the balding man who looked much happier with the change in personnel. Hey! Minori said, sounding miffed. What's the deal with running out of town all of a sudden? You didn't even say goodbye to us. Rude, much? Naruto remained silent. You're a bunny girl now? He said after much consideration. I guess being a witch started being a little old for you. J-jerk. Minori kicked his shin, which he didn't try to avoid. For the sake of the girl's pride, he faked a pained hiss. She covered her cleavage with her arms, but there wasn't much else to cover, really. The outfit was risque, so it was pointless, from the exposed shoulders that cut off at her breasts down to the V-shaped opening that ended at her hips and the provocative fishnet stockings. This is for the whitressing gig, stupid. It's not like I want to walk around in a ridiculous outfit like this, do I? I dunno. You seem to like walking around dressed as a witch. I'm doing this for you, you know. Wait. Wait. Naruto said. What does this have to do with me? Minori looked away as she rubbed her arms. Naruto was aware however that she wasn't doing it from the cold, the weather was warm enough as it is. Don't get mad, Naruto. You have to promise me this. What's this about? Promise me. The money? Naruto's eyes were wide. He held onto her by her arms, shaking the girl. Does it have to do with our reward money? What happened to it? She winced. Not so much ours, but more like yours. What happened to my share? I spent it. All of it. Naruto slumped lifelessly to his knees. Minori patted him on his arm in an act of consolation. She sounded guilty as she explained, Look, Naruto. I'm totally, totally good for it. I'm going to pay back every single jewel I owe you. It's just going to take me a while, maybe another week, or a few weeks tops. That long? How much was the reward? Well, as it turned out, everyone we beat up that day was from the Tora no Tsum clan. They're one of the larger Yakuza clans around the area, and as it turned out there was a bounty on their heads. We took out almost every one of them, except for their clan head, and he gave himself up to the rune knights the next day because there was no one else around. Can you believe that? Trying not to, he said despondently. And the reward? Well, the client was so happy he gave us 250,000 jewels. I didn't even know there was a request in the first place. Someone just showed up at the guild a few days later and gave me the reward. Actually, I've been thinking it over these past two days. The reward money is kind of suspicious. Rewards for these types of mission are usually much lower. Why? Why? Naruto asked, despondent. Why is it suspicious? Well, the guy who gave me the reward was kind of shady to be honest. I have my reservations, but I think he was from a rival Yakuza clan. I was digging around and asking about this mission request that they posted, you know what? There wasn't even one in the first place. That's totally shady, right? No. Why did you spend my share in the first place? Oh, oh you shouldn't have let me rambled on so much then. Minori looked sheepish, saying, well, I've been saving up for this enchantment for my hammer. When the reward came in, one of my guild mates said she knew a guy who could get it for me at a discount it was almost everything I had on me at the time, including the reward money. But he was only holding onto it for me as a favor to her. If I didn't pay up, he already had another buyer lined up, so. I bought it at an impulse. She wrought her hands nervously, adding in a whisper, sorry, Naruto. 
Naruto waved her off, his arm listless. Nah, it's fine I guess. What's money between friends? I'll totally pay you back. I'm taking every mission I can get my hands on, even this. Minori indicated at her attire, hissing, and you know how much I hate this, right? I remember having first-hand experience of how much you hate working there. Why yeah, sorry about that too. In my defense, you were totally being a perv. She said that last part lowly, soft enough just for the two of them to hear. But like I said, I'm doing every mission available. I even had my eyes on this mission in town, but someone else gypped it for me. I had to do this white dressing gig again because of it. Oh wait. Naruto showed her the mission request for the haunted ship. You mean this? I'm in town because of this. Minori snatched it from his hand. That's the one. I can't believe it was you. You. I totally registered for it and everything. The next thing I knew, the mission got taken off the mission registry list, and the accepted guild was left blank. I thought the client cancelled the request. Ha! Huh. I don't know anything about that. Must be something glitchy on their end or something. Minori looked like she didn't quite believe him. I wasn't the one who registered for it, it was my guild master. Oh, she said, crestfallen. Just my luck, ha. Huh. That mission sounded like easy money. Naruto considered for a moment, then sighed. Well, you could always come with us. We could use your help with this, but your share will probably go back to me anyway. It's only fair. Us? Minori questioned. Who'd you come with? He resisted the urge to smack his head, forgetting the introductions. Ah, right. I didn't get a chance to introduce my guildmates. I got into Kate's shelter by the way. This is Wendy and Car Dammit. Not again. Where'd they go? The duo had apparently seen Minori in her bunny costume earlier, and fled much like with you before, wanting to give them space to catch up. It took a while to explain and vehemently deny that Minori was in no way shape or form his girlfriend. Minori spluttered a few indignant responses about the nature of their relationship as well. Wendy was mollified, but Carla still remained skeptical, questioning him about his supposedly torrid relationships with so many different women. She even demanded he tell them if he had any more friends of the female kind. He wisely kept his mouth shut about Martha. That was a bridge he would cross when it arrived. Right, let's get the introductions out of the way. Guys, you've met Minori. Minori, this is Wendy, and the snarky one over there is Carla. A pleasure, Carla said. Wendy greeted Minori with a bow. Nice to meet you, Minori-san. Sorry about before, we didn't mean to assume that you two were, you know, together. That's okay, she cooed. Oh, aren't you just the cutest little thing ever? Ever? How did a cutie pie like you get stuck in a team with this big lummox here? Wendy forced out a horribly mangled smile, choosing to stand there despite her uncomfortable state. Hey ah, uh, thank you. Nice, Minori, Naruto said, deadpan. Stop torturing my apprentice. He didn't know she had a soft spot for kids. At least, Carla couldn't find a fault with Minori like she had with you. Well, there was that brief argument about her supposedly risque which outfit at first. But she's totally cute. You um, could you stop pee-pinching my cheeks, Minori-san? The younger girl asked. It's starting to h hurt. Okay, but you have to stop being formal with me. Call me Minori or, or Big Sis, K. At this point, Wendy looked like she would agree to just about anything. A all right. Naruto continued to lead the way towards the docks as they exited the town proper. The request had stated for them to meet the client, one Captain Saab of the Sea Tub Clarabella, just outside the sea shanty, a bar overlooking the docks. It was a quaint little dive, popular with laborers and the odd sorts of shady businessmen that traversed the sea routes. Of course, their brightly colored clothes and general cleanliness was a sharp contrast to the rest of the denizens of the docks. 
There were a couple of unsavory men leering at them, particularly Minori, but she brushed off their attention without a hint of emotion betraying her features. Naruto didn't have to worry about her, Minori was more than capable of handling herself, but he did feel wary about meeting in a place like this, especially with Wendy and Carla by his side. No wandering off, he whispered to the young girl beside him as they neared the bar. Wendy nodded as she sped up closer to Naruto, to the point that she was hiding behind him. Her grip around Carla's waist tightened. The small cat smartly kept her sharply worded comments about these men to herself, herself, knowing that there was no point in trying to pick a fight with them. Are you Captain Saab? Naruto asked, stopping short before a lavishly dressed individual. The middle-aged captain laughed, lifting the brim of his tweed cap as he uncovered his unsettling green eyes. Saab stood up fully, dusting off the back of his red coat. I, laddie. That'd be me. You the mages I hired for the shindig? That'd be us. We're from Kate Shelter. That got a small laugh out of Saab. A smart ass, are we? We had a lot of those under our previous captain, he said, grinning slyly. Too bad none of them ever made it this far with us. Just as Saab opened his mouth to haul another hearty laugh, a hitch of breath caught his attention. Saab snapped his head towards the young girl cowering behind Naruto. You brought a child with you on a mission? You must be dumber than you look, lad. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the man. The four of us are more than capable of handling it. You just worry about your ship afterwards. We can't guarantee what condition it'll be in if there's a battle. Fine, just don't come bawling to me when the girl's dead, yeah? The state of my ship will be the least of your concern when that happens. Wendy gripped onto him tighter. Minori who was lagging at the rear, spoke up, you know, you're totally hamming up this whole arg. I'm a mean, evil captain role of yours. It's getting pretty in. Quiet, sweetheart. Men are negotiating business. And there it is. I was wondering when the chauvinistic pig angle would come into play. What else have you got for me? Saab gave her a look. Didn't I just ask you to keep your pretty little mouth shut? Our business has yet to be concluded. We'll have time for your petty insults later. The witch was about to tell him off when Naruto stopped her, mirroring the skull on Minori's face. Ignore him, Minori. The mission? Saab shrugged before pointing out towards the sea, at the stranded boat about two kilometers off the docks. That'd be the sea tub Clarabella, a fine ship with a damn fine crew. About three days ago, just as we were about to sail into the harbor, this, this he gestured with his hands, apparition appeared right before our eyes and started chasing the crew off the deck. Fortunately, none of my men were seriously injured. We tried getting back on, of course, but the thing just swatted us off again. It was like whatever it was didn't want us to dock. So we swam to shore, put up a request at the registry and here we are, waiting for the lot of you mages to clear that bloody thing off my ship, Saab said, sighing. I was waiting the whole bloody day for you to arrive. That's just poor service on your end. I'm planning to dock part of the reward as a penalty. That's ridiculous. Minori crossed her arms over her chest, drumming her fingers on her arm. The agreed-upon reward cannot be changed unless we fail to satisfy the prerequisite of the mission. Stop trying to jip us. Naruto was glad that he brought her along. He would have been at a loss otherwise. Time is part of the prerequisite. My time is money, he explained to them. I find it strange that you're protesting so much. After all, the client's word is law. I have perishables aboard my vessel, and your unfortunate delay has cost me dearly. Had you arrived earlier, perhaps this unlikely scenario would have never occurred. Then, you should clearly indicate on your mission request that it was time-sensitive. You left your request open to all guilds in Fiori, I saw that much on the registry. Whose fault is that? Did I now, missus? My goodness, I really should have been more careful when I did that. I am still inexperienced in dealing with your kind. 
Sheesh, so hung up on technicalities. Saab held his hands up. It was my mistake, and I shall own up to it. We shall proceed with the agreed-upon price. That is, if that's all right with you, laddie. That's fine, Naruto said curtly. Is there anything else we need to know about your ship? This mission? Can't think of anything at the top of my head. The captain sighed, his eyes drawn towards the horizon of the port town. Can't honestly say that I feel assured with your services at the moment. I was expecting to see those mages from the women's guild in this town, but then I got the three of you, and your pet instead. Although, one of you is easy on the eyes. But you'll forgive me when I express my displeasure at seeing some random backwater guild handle my mission request when I could have the renowned services of those from Mermaid's Cove. Actually, I'm from Mermaid's Cove. Does that make you happy? Are you now? Saab asked, grinning. What'd you say if I were to dump the services of these adorable cat shelter mages and hire you and your esteemed colleagues instead? I could definitely make it worth your while, and you mine. Minori scoffed. Try it. We'll blacklist you personally and see to it that your ship remain out there for months. Try complaining about your perishables then. Cheeky, cheeky. Saab slowly spread the tip of his tongue over his lips. Lips. The provocative act was a contrast to the glare Naruto sent his way. That's very underhanded of a guild many people hold in high regard, myself included. Why, just hearing the tales of your guild's exploitations alone has left me feeling hot and bothered under my collar. Is it true what they say? That your members offer added incentives to their clients for hiring your guild? Minori's lips thinned in response and her eyes narrowed, choosing not to dignify that with a reply, but Carla had no such qualms. You vile man. Carla's features scrunched up in anger and revulsion. Have you no decency? Watch what you say in front of a child. Oh, and what do we have here? A talking cat? Saab tried to lean in on the cat nestled in Wendy's arms, but Naruto blocked him off, pushing him back roughly. Saab dusted off the imaginary speckles of dirt from his jacket, where Naruto had touched him. Come now. I was just having a look-see. I don't appreciate getting manhandled by my own help, he said, a touch angry. I am paying you after all. We're not being paid to be looked at, right? Saab tootayed under his breath, wiggling his finger. Right you are, lad. But I was merely trying to present a business proposition. He ducked down, regarding Wendy. The young girl hid herself fully behind Naruto, peeking out to look at Saab. Now I presume this here talking cat belongs to you. How about I buy her from you? People would pay a pretty jewel for something so exotic. I'll even give you an honest and fair price. Captain's honor. You uncouth ape. I am not a toy to be bartered. Yo. And no, Wendy said, interrupting the irate exceed. Carla's not for sale. You sure? She's got quite the wicked tongue. I wouldn't mind going up to fifty or even sixty thou, because you're such a lil cutie. How about it? Saab stood up, staring into a pair of furious blue eyes. Maybe you, maybe you could persuade her, lad. It's good money, you know. It was as if Saab was trying to egg him into starting a ruckus right here, in full view of the burly and equally surly sailors lounging around the docks, but Naruto showed surprising resilience by forcing himself not to. Naruto was clenching his jaws tight, forcing out his question through gritted teeth. Where can we find you once we're done? That's a no-sail then. Saab let out a tittering laugh. But seriously, I doubt the lot of you will survive, lad. Though if you do, I'll be waiting over there he pointed towards the sea shanty, having a nice, relaxing pint as I pray for the best. You see if you do get my ship back, but unfortunately die in the process, I won't have to pay the reward now, do I? Saab leaned in closer to Naruto, losing the deranged grin as their foreheads touched, his features suddenly now cold and calculating. So good luck, laddie. Naruto shoved him back forcefully, glaring at Saab, who fell in a rough tumble. 
The wily captain merely shrugged it off as he stood up and dusted his coat. He sauntered over to the bar, all the while, a crescendo of laughter bubbling from his lips. Next to him, Wendy tugged at his poncho. And Naruto, she mumbled, seeing that his gaze never left the man's back. And maybe Chief Rubal W. was right. I don't t think I'm ready. Not for a mission like this. I I. Naruto placed his hand atop her head, the act forcing her to duck her head down, and tousled her hair. Hey come on, I promised everything will be just fine before, didn't I? He smiled down at the two of them. I always keep my word. Besides, we got Minori coming with us, so you guys got nothing to worry about. Minori was still lagging at the rear, her back to them, as she stared at Sob's re retreating form. She snapped her fingers, locking them into a gun with her forefinger and thumb held out, at Saab just before he entered the establishment. She mumbled something under her breath. Turning back to them, Minori smiled. Yeah, ignore that stupid jerk face, she said. We can handle this no prob. Naruto furrowed his brows at her, asking, did you just do what I think you did? Her tone was challenging, and if I did? He's still our client, no matter how much of a bod jerk face he is. Don't get me wrong, I was this close to hitting him. Naruto held out his fingers apart. But. Ah, screw it. He deserves any bad luck coming his way. Totally, right? What are you guys talking about? Wendy asked. Naruto quickly waved her off. Nothing. We're just complaining about jerk face. She didn't look convinced. Come on, he said, dragging the young girl towards the edge of the docks. The sooner we get this stupid mission done, the sooner we get to eat, and Minori can go back to her white dressing job. Hey! Uncalled for, much? Naruto continued the back and forth with Minori to alleviate the tension in the air and raise the morale of his two roommates. He wasn't so much worried for Carla. Wendy was his main concern. The Dragon Slayer was obviously intimidated by Saab, it was probably the first time she dealt with such a character. For a second, he noticed her nod as she squared her shoulders. He couldn't help but smile. There was some hope he could pull her out of her shell. He had his misgivings about bringing her along for this mission, but it was for her sake. Besides, having another familiar face in the form of Minori helped. Naruto held back a sigh. Maybe he was just overthinking things. As he continued to drag her towards the edge of the docks, Wendy began to resist, as if scared that he would accidentally fall into the sea. Ah, uh, Naruto, where are you going? Confused, he motioned towards the ship. Carla leaned out of the young girl's arms and stared pointedly at the choppy waters. Aren't you forgetting about that? Wendy raised her hand, like a student trying to correct her teacher's mistake. Um, Carla could fly me over there, but I don't know whether she could do it for you and Minori. She paused, giving them a once-over. Minori should be fine, but you're kinda big, Naruto. This particular fun fact made him blink. He didn't know cats around here could do that. You can fly? A disbelieving tone seeped into his voice, feeling indignant that Carla would leave out something like that about her. You never told me that. Hum, you never thought to ask, Carla said simply. Though, it looks like you have to swim over to the ship by yourself. A small twitch of the lips was the only indication that she was amused by his predicament. He was kind of put out that the cat wouldn't elaborate further, but there was always time for that after the mission. All of a sudden, Minori laughed boisterously. Lucky. I knew that buying that enchantment now was totally worth it. What are the odds of something like this happening? What are you on about? Naruto asked. The witch shot him a mischievous smile. Ofofu. Check out the spoils of your generosity, Naruto. She requipped her magical hammer then straddled it like a broomstick, the head of the hammer positioned at the back as she gripped the handle tight between her thighs. Naruto didn't have to think about what would happen next. Minori had some serious issues about becoming a full-fledged witch. 
Her takeoff was shaky at best, but she managed to rein it in, controlling her pseudo-broomstick with jerky movements. It seemed that she was still learning how to use it. Ahaha! She yelped, her ride dipping to one side, almost making her fall off. She steadied it at the last minute. Ha! Isn't this just the best ever, Naruto? Spoils of my generosity? It ki kinda is. Naruto shook his head, his disbelief making way for excitement as he smiled. Well, to be fair, that thing is really cool. You have to let me ride that thing later. It's seriously unfair that all of you can fly. He leveled a betrayed look at the young girl. Even you, Wendy. Yeah? But I can't fly, it's only because of Carla. Naruto patted her on her head. Well, that's okay because even if you guys can fly, my way's faster. He scooped Wendy into his arms and Carla because she was in hers, before they even had a chance to think twice, leaping off the wooden pier as he jumped into the sea. Their frightened screams, particularly Carla, because she had never screamed before, would forever be engraved in his mind. It was that loud. They landed atop the surface of the water with relative ease, not even making a splash as they traversed across the sea at speed unimaginable to the average man. Wait for me, Naruto. Minori shouted behind them, shakily chasing after them on her flying magical hammer. How in the world did you do that? Stop hiding so much about yourself. He laughed aloud. I'm not wet. I'm not wet. Carla repeated in his arms, almost like a mantra. Their loud screams had attracted the attention of a large number of sailors and laborers back at the docks. They were obviously curious that someone had finally came to deal with the haunted ship. Although, what caught their attention was the figure that was running over the surface of the water. In an instant, rumors began to spread among the crowd, ridiculous tales about how he was a powerful water mage that, with a small snap of his fingers, could summon a gigantic tidal wave that could single-handedly destroy a town. Others had loudly proclaimed him to be the son of the mythical Poseidon, the god of the sea and the bringer of storms. While the rumors of the blonde's origins may have been largely unknown and stories may have differed between parties, the large crowd, crowd, together as a single collective mind had resolutely decided on the title for the obviously powerful mage. He was a god among seamen. H. How are you doing this? Wendy shouted into his ear. Naruto couldn't help that small bubble of laughter at hearing the question. Magic. A fog rolled in the moment they stepped on the deck and Naruto was instantly on alert. It was unnatural. The sunlight from outside was barely reaching in as it shrouded their vision of the harbor and the townscape with a thick cloud of mist, it was as if the fog had cut them off from the outside world, trapping them forever within the confines of the allegedly haunted sea tub Clarabella. Whoa! Creepy vibe alert! How thick is this fog? I can't even see the sun, Minori said nervously, inching closer to him and the others. She held her magical hammer at the ready, shivering as a sudden draft that blew past them. Yeah, I guess we better stick close together. Naruto suddenly turned to her, alarmed. Wait, are you scared? Esso, what if I am? His eyes widened in disbelief. You're a witch. He said, almost accusingly. I brought you along because of that. You know, witches' ghosts. You see the connection here? Aren't you supposed to be an expert on supernatural stuff? Don't you curse people for a living? She balled her fists around the tall handle of her weapon, hissing, Naruto, stop putting your foot in your mouth and think. How does that even make sense? I'm not a real witch, stupid. My magic just makes me look like one. I don't know a thing about the occult. I don't even understand tarot cards. His re response faltered, well. I didn't know that. You should have explained it clearer back then. Besides, I thought you said this mission was supposed to be easy money? Because it looked simple enough and the mission was in town. It was easy as in I didn't have to spend unnecessarily traveling to another. The ship suddenly groaned in protest at their intrusion. 
A strange, melancholic wail echoed around them. Minori made a small squeak and hurried over to the group, who were now huddled together in fright. She latched onto him and Wendy, cowering. Wendy meanwhile had gripped onto his pants as she peeked around him, staring around the deck through squinted eyes, already prepared to close them at a moment's notice. Oh okay. Let's all stop fighting and not make any loud noises, Naruto said, looking around warily. I think something knows we're here. He led them forward to examine the deck of the sea tub Clarabella. The state of the ship was beyond comprehension. Whatever happened here could not be explained logically, but it had aged beyond the relatively short span of three days since it was abandoned. The wooden structure was decayed, as if it had been submerged underwater for decades. Fungi seeped into boards, turning the normal brown shade into a dull green and gray as the algae spread throughout the ship. The rotting stench of decayed carcasses assaulted his senses. There were no obvious signs of the origin, but the smell was just as strong wherever he moved. Something was seriously wrong here. Naruto couldn't help but shudder as a spider dropped in his line of sight, hanging onto the end of its web before scurrying back up again. It was worse once they got further in, as every step they took, he couldn't shake off this feeling that they were being watched. When Wendy Wendy stepped on a particularly squeaky floorboard, she let out a surprised whimper, and even Naruto couldn't help that his breath hitched too. Give him a dangerous S-class missing Neen any time of the day, and he'd gladly trade it for this mission. He just couldn't deal with the scary stuff, and who could blame him? This ship was as creepy as hell. O-U-T. The voice was faint, as if the voice was coming from one of those old radios with bad signal leaving the hauntingly eerie static backdrop as a constant reminder of its otherworldly presence. N. N O W dot dot dot. Kia. Wendy screamed. The girl squeezed her eyes shut as she pressed her face into his back, her nails digging into the skin. Carla was doing marginally better, one of her paws was holding onto Wendy's leg as her eyes darted around the deck, doing her best to keep the fear from showing. That's totally not cool at all. Minori's back was pressed against his own, as she kept a lookout for his blind spot. Do you see where it's coming from? It sounds like it's coming from everywhere, he told her. Reaching down, he tapped Wendy on her shoulders, coaxing her. Wendy. Wendy, we need your help. Can you pinpoint where the voice is? She shook her head against his waist. And no. Dot dot dot. Frantic, Minori tapped his back, stopping short of full on hitting him. She was as white as a sheet, her voice panicked, saying, and Naruto. There was a face in T that window. Where? She pointed out the door to him. There. As if on cue, the wooden door to the lower cabins buckled, like there was someone on the other side trying to knock it off its hinges. The noise caused all of them to snap their head towards the disturbance, but it died down, down upon attracting their attention. Eerie silence stretched for an eternity, before the floorboard creaked eerily once again, this time, more pronounced as heavy footsteps resounded near the steps leading up to the bow of the large ship. LEA. V. A tall, shadowed being appeared before them. There was no defined shape to the shadow, but it barely resembled a human form. The being began to alternate between long and wide, making the shadow to appear disjointed as it trudged down the steps, its arm-like appendages swaying in front of it in a hypnotic manner. It was like there was a certain rhythm to its movement as the pool of shadow its body attached to the ship crept forward, nearer to their position. A breathless moan escaped from the large mass as its head lolled around its bulky shoulders. A kunai found its way to its center, parting the massive shadow aside like water as the projectile harmlessly passed through the being. Damn. What gives? All of a sudden, it stooped over just a few meters away from them, its arms slowly beginning to merge with the pool of shadow beneath it. Its form jerked around, as if the rest of its body was resisting the force that was trying to assimilate it into the darkness. The shadowed being screeched as it raised its head up to the heavens. With a final tug downwards, it disappeared into the floor, not leaving a single trace of its remains on the deck. 
Why you did it? Wendy's reaction was instantaneous. She brightened, like a huge weight had been removed from her shoulders. Yeah, nice one, Naruto. I think. Minori patted his arm in a show of encouragement. Not too sure what you did there, but at least you killed that thing, right? I'm not, I'm not sure. No, it's probably not dead, Carla said, remaining alert. She missed the glimmer of happiness extinguishing in Wendy's eyes. It didn't look like physical attacks worked there. Look at it this way, if that really was the ghost, then didn't it feel too easy? The captain said that it drove everyone in his crew off the ship. Then how could Naruto's knife kill it? The attack wasn't anything special. Ha, huh, Minori said. I suppose so. Ugh, ghosts had just had to be ghosts in this mission. How, troublesome, Naruto said. Come on, we better start searching around. It might still be here. Naruto locked his hands into seals. Kagebunshin no jutsu. A small cloud sprung around their position as five copies surrounded them in a protective circle. Their eyes were grim as they reached into their pouches to pull out a kunai. Spread out. Look out for anything suspicious. Minori shuddered. Creepy. Naruto wasn't sure whether the tension was getting to her, or it was just her aversion to his clones, though she refused to look in his direction. The resultant search was largely fruitless, except for a few peculiar signs that the group couldn't make heads or tails of. Naruto was starting to get restless at the inconclusive results, dismissing his clones abruptly. We should head downstairs, he said. Chances are we'd probably find something down there. Nobody argued with his logic as they made their way to the door to the lower cabins, the prior disturbance now gone. The lower levels were in surprisingly good condition compared to the aged wreck they had seen above. It didn't take them long to cautiously maneuver past the narrow passages and nondescript cabins and storage areas, finding nothing of note except for a few strange wares that caught their eye. They finally came to the last door towards the end of the hall. I think this is the captain's quarters, Carla said, indicating towards a small Mark CQ carved into the wooden archway. Do you think the captain is hiding anything inside? Minori, Minori huffed. Well, Saab does look the part of an illegal smuggler. He's probably hiding all kinds of nasty stuff. Only one way to find out. Naruto tried the handle, hearing the soft click of the latch, but it wouldn't budge. Nice. Guess I have to break this down. Taking more pleasure than he should have, he stepped back and smashed his foot into the door, almost tearing it off its hinges. Oops. Saab's quarters were much bigger than any of the other cabins they had seen earlier. The furniture inside was lush and there was ample space to move about. They were inside his main chamber, which came equipped with a dining table. The room was lavishly designed and clean, a stark contrast to some of the rooms outside. Saab certainly prided on crafting an eccentric image of himself. There was a short and narrow entryway that led into an antechamber, his office come bedroom. The group broke apart to explore the oddities in his quarters. Naruto whistled, picking up a deformed skull belonging to some weird creature. He's a lot richer than I thought. How's a guy like that get so rich and afford all this rubbish? I told you he was up to no good. Minori hung back, peering over his shoulder to look at the skull in his hands. I bet you half the stuff in this room are stolen. Not going to argue with that. But what in the world is this supposed to be? Some exotic monster, no doubt. The purple-haired girl poked a finger through its empty eye socket. No doubt, laddie, she drawled in a mocking tone. I'd sell it to you for a fair price. Arg. Captain's honor, I say. You really hate him that much? Minori gave him a funny look. Says the guy who was this close to bashing his head in. Fair enough, he told her, raising his hands in mock surrender. Come on, I'm sure we can dig something up about this ghost around here somewhere. As if on cue, Wendy called out for them. Over he here. I think I found something. 
The duo proceeded into the narrow entryway, cramming their bodies in the tight space to peer inside the small antechamber his bedroom. He allowed Minori to stand in front of him, seeing that he was slightly taller. Wendy was kneeling to the side of his bed, ducking her head down to look under the wooden bed frame. What did you find? Carla asked, having squeezed her way in between Naruto's legs to jump ahead of the queue. Look, Wendy said, holding up a small jewelry box that fitted inside the palm of her small hand. It was just lying there on the ground, and I found what was supposed to be inside. It's a locket. It's right here under the bed. Wendy, wait. She reached under and took hold of the object just as Naruto tried to stop her, but it was too late. Her irises rolled upwards, leaving the white of her eyes exposed. She was then thrust backwards by an unseen force, slamming her frail form into Saab's hearty mahogany desk. Her body contorted unnaturally as her back was molded over the edge of the desk. She spat out a glob of blood over Saab's pristine white bedsheet. W. Wendy. Naruto screamed, trying to push a shell-shocked Minori aside to get to her. Get out of the way. She's. Suddenly, Wendy floated a few feet above the ground as something seemingly guided her body still locked in that unnatural angle when she had collided against the desk just in front of the entryway. Everyone stilled. She barreled into Minori like an unstoppable cannonball, knocking her aside which caused the witch to topple on top of Naruto, pinning him under her body weight. Wendy was dragged around like a ragdoll as she exited the captain's quarters, her body thrashing against any and every obstacle on the way out. Naruto Naruto pushed Minori off him none too lightly. Shit. I'm going to stop her. He said as the clamor of Wendy being tossed around continued to resound in the empty corridors of the ship. You two go find out what the hell that was. He didn't give them time to read but as he dashed out of the room, intent on finding his wayward teammate. He chastised himself. If only he had acted faster, things wouldn't have gotten so monumentally fucked. He continued after her wake of destruction in a dead sprint. Whatever entity was haunting this ship was certainly getting restless, or stronger. The doors to the others' cabins rattled dangerously, slamming open and shut as he sped past. He didn't pay it any mind. Turning a sharp corner, Naruto caught a glimpse of Wendy just as she floated out of the door leading up towards the deck, the door slamming shut behind her. Naruto acted on instinct, pulling Chakra in his palm. He destroyed the door with a half-formed Raisingan, without pausing in his steps. Wendy was hovering in the air just in front of the ship's mast, arms held out to her sides like she was pinned to a cross. Her head hung listlessly. The locket in her hand started to bleed a mysterious black substance and mixed together with her blood, coagulating the fluid. Thick black smoke arose, clinging to her person. Naruto stalked forward, his senses on edge for the slightest hint of disturbance. He reached out for Wendy's foot and tugged her down. Her body was surprisingly compliant as she floated down to the deck. The blonde grabbed her by her shoulders, kneeling. Wendy, can you hear me? Wendy looked up, smiling. Her eyes were unfocused. I'm okay, why? No reason, he said, wary. I just wanted to see how you were doing. Could you show me your left hand for a sec? Seeing no reaction from his question, he tapped her left fist, the one that was holding on to the accursed, the accursed relic. Wendy. You have me to show me that thing you found. Ah, oh, why? She collapsed forward, clinging onto him like a child as she shook her head against his neck. I don't wanna. Come on, don't be stub. Wendy lifted her head back and bit down on his neck, hard. Naruto disappeared into a cloud of white smoke, reappearing behind her. He subdued her by gripping an arm around her neck, saying. I thought I told you to not be too stubborn. She struggled against his hold. Let me go. Let me go. Naruto. Minori shouted, bustling through the broken remains of the door he had destroyed. We figured it out. She stopped short at the sight of them. What happened here? 
She tried to bite me, he said curtly, struggling to contain the younger girl without actually hurting her. Quick. Tell me what's wrong with her. Minori rushed to kneel in front of them. She's being possessed. We found a log Sob's been keeping, and to keep a long story short, we were totally right about him being a smuggler. That locket is cursed, and whatever that demon or ghost that's haunting that thing has been terrorizing the crew ever since he brought it aboard. It started out small at first, but the closer they got to Deligion, the worse it got. This thing has been messing with their minds. So you don't know what it is? Well, Carla's trying to figure it out. Saab has this monster encyclopedia in his room. We're not the only ones who've been trying to find out what it is. No, I'm sure he knew what it was. Naruto grunted. Figured he'd try something underhanded like this. Wendy clawed at his arms, but he held firm. Minori tried to stop her, but the possessed dragon slayer kept kicking, kicking out at her. Pin her legs down and grab her left hand, he told Minori. Use something to get the locket away from her. Don't touch it. Cautiously, Minori gripped Wendy's wrist tight, prying open her fingers which she had balled into a fist. The locket had seared itself into her palm, leaving the skin around it swelled, in an angry shade of red with painful blisters circling the wound. H how do we get it out? Minori asked him. Naruto's face was grim. I'll. I'll do it. Just help me hold her down. They shuffled around awkwardly, as Minori held the younger girl down, leaving Naruto with his hands free. He summoned a clone by his side, and the clone took over his position. Squaring his shoulders, Naruto relieved his kunai from his holster and held Wendy's fingers steady to keep her palm exposed. Whoa. T that's. What's necessary, Naruto said. We need to take the locket away from her. We can't be sure what would happen if we leave it on her for too long. W what are you guys doing? Wendy asked, no longer fidgeting. She started to tear up. And Naruto? Minori-san? S stop. Get, get off me. Naruto, I I think she's back to normal. Should I? Don't. Naruto shook his head, ignoring the look of betrayal etched on Wendy's features. She did this before. It's a trick. And no. It's not a trick. Please. Please listen to me. Minori looked conflicted, he could see her gnaw on the inside of her cheek. Can't you do something first just to be sure? Naruto held her gaze, then sighed, planting the kunai into the ground. Fine. Give me a minute. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He pulled into himself, finding that elusive center to enter a meditative state, but it was harder than he thought. He clenched his jaw. He couldn't reach out to the natural energy in the surroundings without losing it abruptly. Naruto slammed a fist down on the deck. Shit. He hissed. And Naruto, please, please stop this. All I are remembered was being in tea that room and blacking out. The next thing I know, you guys are doing this. This, the meek voice cried out from underneath him, sniffing. It's me. Wendy tried to smile. I don't know how I can show you that it's me, but please, you have to be believe me. Please? Naruto. Minori said. His voice was low, remorseful, if it is really you, I know you're going to hate me for this. You're probably never going to trust me again, but... I'm doing this for your sake. Naruto plucked the kunai from the ground, and inched the blade over the locket. Ugh. Minori shivered, releasing her hold over Wendy, as she clasped her hands over her ears. She clenched her eyes shut as a terrifying, anguished scream tore from her throat. Shit, Minori. Wendy managed to wriggle one of her legs free and kicked out at Minori, catching the witch on her nose. Minori tumbled back as Wendy continued to rain down kicks on the older girl's body. His clone tried to stop her, but his eyes began to unfocus, before he collapsed to the ground and disappeared in a puff of smoke. 
Naruto's vision began to waver as his mind processed what his clone had experienced. Dark spots appeared in his peripheral vision, which stretched and morphed into these shadowed beings with hollow eyes. The skies twisted, plunging the area into darkness as ominous clouds loomed above him. In an instant, they appeared all around him, crowding him as they clung onto his body, pulling at his limbs as if they were trying to tear him apart. Their presence was suffocating. There was a gut-wrenching screech as the shadows opened their mouths wide in unison. It was deafening, the intensity increasing to the point that the ground beneath him began to shake. It continued for what felt like hours before he heard a voice calling out for him, it was distant due to the intensity of screams ringing in his ear. Naruto. There it was. Naruto. It was, it was barely there. Get a hold of yourself, you idiot. Louder now. You have to save Wendy. Finding himself momentarily, Naruto found the voice familiar, demanding. Damn, he had been careless. Feeling his fingers gripped around a cool metal surface, he jerked his hand up and stabbed down on his thigh. Opening his eyes sharply, Naruto felt clarity being restored. The small form of Carla hovered before him, her paw held back in mid-swing, she had taken to beating his cheeks to a pulp. Finally, Carla said. She pulled her attention away from the wound he had inflicted on himself. Now, go do something about that imp. Wendy had managed to sneak away when he was under. She was perched atop the ship's main mast, her legs swinging loosely under her. Teehee, she said, waving down at them. You were right before by the way. I was faking it. There was something else floating just above her shoulder. A small bat-like creature beat its wings, attached to the back of its misshapen body, to propel itself further into the air. Its horribly sunken cheeks and horn-like ears made it seem all the more devilish, as it snarled and gnashed its sharp and crooked teeth at them. And just what the hell is that? Naruto asked. It's an imp. Carla snapped. Quickly now. There's not much it can do once its illusions have been broken. It's siphoning Wendy's magic to regain its form. That's why you can see it. It won't be long before it drains her completely. Destroy it now before it kills her. Naruto didn't need to be told twice. He quickly made his way towards Minori, who was still struggling to break free from the illusion. Minori was writhing on the floor, grimacing as she whimpered in pain. He sent a surge of chakra through her body, but nothing happened. He tried again, but to no avail. Damn. Maybe Chakra didn't work on her. Or was it that the nature of the illusion was fundamentally different compared to back home? Did that mean that he couldn't apply the same thing to himself? Dismiss Dismissing it, he turned to Carla. Stay out of reach, Naruto said. We can't risk you being put under its illusion. He motioned towards Minori. You need to take her with you, maybe the illusion might break if she's far enough from the source. Where exactly does that leave you? And what about Wendy? He smiled, reassuring her, don't worry. I'll deal with it. Just go help Minori first. The feline appeared conflicted but complied nonetheless. Her face was stern as she said, you'd better. She regarded the possessed girl. She's counting on you. We all are. With that, Carla swooped down and grabbed Minori before flying off towards the harbor, her flight unsteady, probably because she was unaccustomed to carrying someone heavier than Wendy. Just as Naruto was about to act, the imp floated down in front of him. He didn't hesitate to quickly cut it down in its place, but his attack phased through its body. It cackled impishly, the irony lost on the creature, as it twirled in the air, clapping its small claw-like hands in delight. What the hell? He had seen something like this before, likening the creature's abilities to that of the masked Nin from Akatsuki back when the man confronted their team to stop them from reaching Sasuke. Tihi, when he said from above them, the imp screeching in tandem, as if it was speaking through her. It's futile to resist. This host is going to die. She lifted one foot off the ground, over the edge, as she balanced, balanced on uneven footing. 
the drop was roughly 10 meters. The intent was clear. One way or another. Maybe you should just run away like your friends there. Come on, Naruto told her. You know me better than that. Standing before the mast, he lashed out at the thick, circular wooden beam with a chakra-enforced kick. The mast came crashing down and Wendy along with it, but he was on hand to snatch her from the air even before the possessed girl could process what had happened. Naruto relished the surprise and horror that played across the creature's face. Wendy tried to wrestle her way out of his grip, but Naruto held firm, managing to maneuver his way to pin Wendy under his body weight by kneeling over her midsection. Stop. Fidgeting. So. Much, he groused, trying to restrain her hands as she tried to swat his face. Above them, the imp went into a frenzy. Naruto could feel the illusion start to wash over him as his vision wavered. However, he was prepared. Even if he was unsure about the implications of magic and chakra in this world, he knew that pain would prevent him from being enthralled. That much he was certain of. Twisting the kunai still embedded in his thigh, the dark spots disappeared. Naruto continued to apply pressure to the wound. He then relieved a spare kunai from his pouch, before cutting into the skin around the locket seared into Wendy's palm. The young girl beneath him screamed, a piercing, blood-curling scream that sent shivers down his spine. The skin on her hand started to cauterize as if the locket had been superheated, damaging the epidermis and blackening the skin around it. Naruto cursed. Stop. He screamed at the imp, his voice hoarse. Fuck off. You're hurting her. The imp snapped its mouth at him. Noticing that Wendy was locking her jaw, Naruto blanched. He tried to force open her mouth before she bit off her tongue. Naruto didn't even so much as wince as she bit down on his hand. At least she wasn't hurting herself. Tears sp spilled down her cheeks. Wendy's scream got increasingly desperate, muffled as it was with his fingers jammed into her mouth. She tried to grab at his face, in particular his eyes, in an effort to get him off, but Naruto pushed her back down. He gripped her bloodied hand around the wrist and held it away from her, trapping it under his forearm. She struggled to kick him off, but he was just too big for her. I'm sorry, Naruto said quietly. Stealing himself, Naruto dug the kunai deeper into her palm. There was no finesse or tenderness in his actions, just a single-minded approach to separate the cursed jewelry from Wendy. It came out after much difficulty, the young girl beneath him sinking into unconsciousness the moment it did. His hands bloodied and shivering, Naruto used the kunai to move the locket away from her, before plunging it straight down the middle with vicious stab. There were no outward signs that the possession had been lifted, but he experienced a strange calmness when he destroyed the accursed relic. The imp had used the distraction to flee, but it was still within his sight. Standing, Naruto channeled the kunai in his grip with chakra, the translucent bluish energy forming over the bloodied blade. With a simple flick of his wrist, the kunai sailed toward its target in an arc before being buried in its skull. It careened through the air before plummeting into the sea. Naruto sighed. He proceeded to scoop the unconscious girl tighter into his arms, taking extra care not to bump into the wound on her hand. It was no longer bleeding as badly as before. Let's. Let's get you off this stupid ship. Naruto, Naruto's thoughts were jumbled as he made his way towards his destination, his strides purposeful and hurried. Carla had refused to talk to him. The feline didn't even deign to look at his general direction as she hovered over the healer's shoulder. It had left Minori to fill him in on what little she knew, just to erase the stifling silence lingering in the room. Minori didn't try to play peacemaker at least. Naruto was thankful that the witch didn't, but in nor did she try to stop him when he left so abruptly. From what he had been told, it was not known when or how imps first came to form, but many years ago, they were feared and heralded as the undying nightmare. They were such notoriously hard creatures to kill due to their unique makeup, they had to possess an item before it could manifest its true form. 
The process was made much harder given that the item had to first hold sentimental value to someone on their deathbed before it could corrupt the emotions imbued within and take it as its own. Thankfully, imps were such rare creatures that they were hardly dealt with anymore, their case sadly being the exception. Still, it didn't make up for the fact that Saab had lied to them. Naruto found himself standing in front of the sea shanty, hesitant to enter, as he clenched and unclenched his fists. The decision was made for him however when a patron exited the bar and gawked at him, blocking the entryway. Papo Zidonson? The drunk asked. What? Naruto said. You know what, never mind. Just get out of the way. The drunk did so, staggering away from him as if his presence was larger than life. Why yes. Of course, he mumbled, slurring his words. The kingdom shall hear of your heroic exploits, son of Poseidon. God among. Naruto slammed the door shut behind him, the bar deathly silent by his loud en entrance. Slowly, Saab stood up, seated amongst the sea of burly and unsavory men as the captain regarded Naruto. He clapped, taking an extra long look around the bar, feigning confusion as to why the others weren't following him. The hero returns, lads. Might I introduce the mage that saved all of our hides, a mister? Naruto didn't reply, causing Saab to frown. Now, don't be a wet blanket, lad. I know you're a bit sad about that young girl dying and all, but didn't I warn you that might happen? How about I add a little extra to the reward, maybe you might even forget about this whole unpleasant mess. Granted, the reward will, of course, be docked due to your reckless and total disregard for my property. Actually, the mast alone that you destroyed cost more than the reward I was offering. I'm not even counting the damages to our cargo, or my quarters in particular, but... In the blink of an eye, Naruto wrapped a hand around the man's throat, squeezing it tight. He wondered how Saab could invoke the same amount of revulsion inside him as pain had back then. This man sickened him. You knew what it was? Naruto hissed into his ear. And you didn't tell us? What the fuck is wrong with you? Had he wished to, Naruto could have crushed his neck. Instead, he forced Saab's mouth open and stuffed down the remains of the cursed locket down the man's throat. It was only fitting that he returned it to its proper owner. Saab tried desperately to struggle out of his grasp. The man clawed, kicked and trashed in an attempt to pry his steel-laden fingers off his neck, choking as the remains of the cursed relic blocked off his airway. His eyes darted around the bar. Most of the patrons chose to ignore his anguished and muffled screams as they looked on the scene with small amounts of awe, fear and bloodlust. S. Stop. Saab said, forcing the mangled word from his mouth, driving his fingers into Naruto's face. His grip around Saab's throat tightened. I know you can do it. Naruto. Naruto's blinked, eyes widening as he remembered the words his father had uttered to him before. Was this how he honored the legacy of his father and Jiraiya Shursho? Sinking down to his level and taking a man's life for mindless vengeance? Was this how he showed his promise? To the only member of Team 7 whom he had sworn to stop in his deluded quest for revenge. Naruto clenched his free hand. Slowly, he decreased the pressure on Saab's neck. However, Saab, sensing his chance to pull free, lunged forward to swing an awkward punch. Naruto tilted his head as the punch soared well past him, striking back with his own swift jab to the man's trachea. Saab bowed down, choking out blood and the remains of the locket from his mouth. Naruto bent down to his level, tugging at the captain's ear. Don't ever come back to Diligion or anywhere even remotely close to here. You got me? Saab glared up at him. F fuck you. Seeing that his warning was unheeded, Naruto turned his body to deliver a crushing roundhouse to the abdomen. Saab crashed into the table he had been sitting in, toppling it over as drinks and shattered pieces of wood flew through the air. The small scuffle ensued a small free-for-all melee, as the other patrons took it as a cue and joined in on the action. Remember what I said, Saab. Naruto shook his head as he walked towards the entrance, 
ducking down to avoid a mug that shattered against the wall beside him. Guilt seeped into his conscience. Well, he felt guiltier, to be precise. He shouldn't have come here looking for revenge. His team should have been his main concern right now. Well, at least taking all of Saab's jewels was a small comfort. Minori was seated outside the ward when he returned, raising an eyebrow at his sudden reappearance. You were gone for quite some time, she said nonchalantly. Naruto scratched his temple, taking the empty seat next to her. Yeah, he said. Had to get some fresh air and get my head sorted out. Any news from the healers? Nothing good. There's lots of bruises to her body, and she may have fractured her spine. The burns on her hand were a nasty piece of work. There was some kind of complication when that thing possessed her. They're saying that the wound is cursed or something, and when you cut into her hand, it actually made it um worse. Naruto urged her to continue, his face solemn. Right, so they can't heal it completely now. She's gonna have some trouble using that hand for a few days, but she's totally going to recover. That's good news at least. It just might take a while not that long mind you, just you know, a while. He slumped back in his seat, relieved. Great, he said. Is she awake yet? They gave her something to let her sleep it off. She's out cold. It might probably be a few hours before she wakes up. Naruto nodded. All right. He pointed at the bandage over her nose. What about you? You okay there? Minori laughed off his concerns, touching the bandage gingerly. Besides feeling and looking totally stupid? Yeah, I'm fine. She sniffed, looking down. I'm just really bummed about all this. I let you down back at the ship, didn't I? What? No way. You did fine. If anyone let you guys down, it's me. She sighed, smiling. You're a nice guy, Naruto. Just as he was about to rebut, she continued, Really, you are. But I'm not an idiot, and I definitely don't need to be molly coddled. I know how I did back there, and plainly speaking, I was useless. You don't need to mince words with me. How about we both agree that we sucked? Uh. Minori made a face at him, saying, Your humility can be very annoying. Naruto blinked. No one has ever said that to me before. Minori, Minori rounded on him. Well, it's totally true. Jeez. Just how nice can you be? Do you go around helping old ladies with their groceries? The next thing you know you're gonna tell me that I don't have to pay you the reward money I owe you. Because you're just so nice. Ha ha. Nice try. I'm never going to forget. Excuse me. A nurse whispered sharply from behind the counter. Please keep your voices down. Our patients are resting. Embarrassed, they both offered their apologies. That one was your fault, he told Minori out of the corner of his mouth. He was smiling stiffly to reassure the stern-looking nurse. You talk loud. What? She whispered back, her voice strained. No, I don't. She elbowed him in his ribs. Shut up. Once the nurse had left to resume her patrols, Minori spoke up again, Hey, whatever happened to the wound on your leg? Naruto looked down. He had forgotten about that. She must have noticed the blood stains that had seeped around his pants. Nothing, it's fine. I didn't cut it too deep. Really? From what Carla told me, you really stuck it in there. You should probably get that checked out. You might have nicked something in there. Here. She reached over and pulled his poncho to one side. Let me see. Uh. Naruto hissed as the girl leant down over him. He pushed her away before anyone else walked past them. What gives? For someone who once called him a pervert, Minori was oddly comfortable with invading his personal space. Upon noticing the lack of a wound, Minori sat up sharply and gave him a deadpan look. I honestly don't know what else to expect from you, Naruto. 
Don't tell me you have some kind of healing magic as well? Look, it's miraculously healed and not even a scratch, she said, almost accusingly. It's not like that, Naruto said. I can heal myself for the minor stuff cuts, bruises that sort of thing. Right. Minori said slowly, standing. I can tell that you're a secretive guy, Naruto, but maybe you should be open about yourself to some peop people people you're close with. I'm not saying with me, but Carla mentioned a few things about you when you left. Well, you know. The witch was quiet for a moment. I honestly don't mean to pry into your relationship, I just thought you should know. They are your teammates. That's important, right? Yeah, of course it is, he said quietly. Minori shook her head. Sorry. She squeezed her eyes shut in embarrassment. I really didn't want to butt in. She motioned with her hands towards the exit. I should probably go now. I appreciate you telling me, but you don't have to leave if you don't want to. No, it's okay. I need to head back to the guild anyway. Mistress Agatha wants an update about Saab's ship. Apparently, it's causing a slowdown at the harbor. Right, Naruto said, clearing his throat. Thanks, by the way, you know, for just about everything today. Don't sweat it. Minori winked before her mouth formed into an O. Are you planning to stay in Diligion after Wendy's been discharged? For a few days at least. Just to let her recover a bit more. Then you could stay at my place. Her cheeks colored. I mean, Wendy and Carla could bunk with me, if they don't mind. You have to take the couch in the common room though. It's the least I can do for you guys. It beats having to have your reward money paying for an inn. Naruto brightened, surprised at the offer. That'd be great. Minori smiled at him. For some reason, the distance between them felt awkward. I'll come back to pick you guys up later. Um, see you till then. He waved her goodbye, scratching his head when she left. That was odd. Kids these days, he heard an elderly woman say, hidden behind the newspaper she was reading. It was obvious she was listening in on their conversation rather than browsing the articles. So forward. Wendy blinked as she stared up at the unfamiliar ceiling. Ceiling. It was stark white, cold and pure sterilized. Where was she? She felt lethargic, her limbs heavy like lead, but a numbing sensation clouded her senses. Why was her throat so sore? And her hand unbearably itchy? She tried to wiggle her fingers to get the blood flowing again, but found herself unable to do so. It felt too stiff to move. Weird. Propping herself on her elbows, Wendy found the small form of Carla nestled close to her side, her nose scrunching up in that familiar grumpy expression of hers whenever the feline was cold. The young girl instinctively tried to pull the cat into her arms, but before she did, she noticed the bandage wrapped around her hand. Since when did that get there? The mission. She bolted up from the bed, accidentally waking the cat beside her. What happened during the mission? The last thing she remembered was the locket and... Wendy. Carla said sleepily. She choked, feeling bile rise up in the back of her throat. Wendy could still feel the malevolent presence of that entity lingering inside her mind, tormenting her endlessly from within. It was the violation of being kept prisoner inside her own body that made her shudder. She had felt so utterly helpless, writhing alone in that suffocating, inky black abyss it had trapped her in, with no one to save her, it had felt like she had been trapped there for ages in a bad nightmare. She didn't realize that she had started crying. A faint shushing sound greeted her as Wendy felt someone pat her back to comfort her. She looked up to find Naruto as he put a finger to his lips. Picking up on his actions, Carla hopped onto her lap as the feline wiped away the tears trickling down her cheeks. Naruto. She wheezed out in between sobs. Carla? It's all right, the older boy said reassuringly. It felt good to hear his voice, it made her feel safe. I, 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 I. The mission? You don't remember what happened? He asked her. 
and no. I remembered picking up the locket and. And. Naruto shushed her. Don't cry. It's all over. His expression tightened as he forced a strained smile. You don't have to worry about what happened. I took care of it, okay? He explained glibly. That thing won't ever hurt you again. Wendy looked away, his words having brought up more uncomfortable memories. She glanced towards the open window, noticing that the sun was already setting. It must have been a few hours since they boarded the sea tub Clarabella. Had she been asleep since then? She gripped the soft covers of the comforter. Maybe Chief Rubal had been right to not allow her to go on a mission. She was regretting it already. She should have just stayed back at the guild. After all, she was a liability, and she had dragged Naruto into her childish desires. She was always getting in his way. He was a strong and reliable mage made to babysit her. She. I'm sorry. When he looked up, surprised that it was Naruto who had uttered those words. I ended up breaking my promise to you guys. Wendy vehemently shook her head. And no, I should be the one apologizing. You could have done it alone, but I forced you to take me with you. I should have Jay just listened to. Stop it. Carla said harshly, interrupting her. Carla's outburst had frightened and alarmed the two of them into a stupor, leaving their mouths gaping slightly. Pathetic. The exceed huffed before she breathed deeply and turned away. Look at you two, outdoing each other to get on the pity parade. I don't see the need to apologize. We finished the request, didn't we? B but I. B but I. Wendy, enough of that. What's important is that we're a team now. She leveled a strong glare at them, daring anybody to object to her statement. And what do teammates do for each other? We watch each other's backs. Naruto asked. Yes, Carla said. We protect one another, work together, and above all, always be honest no matter what. She leveled a pointed look at Naruto. Do we understand each other? The room was silent for a moment before Naruto broke it. Heh, he snickered softly. Another team, huh? Naruto chorused her sentiments with a sad sigh. All right, I'm up for it, he said, looking up towards the ceiling as he crashed down onto the bed. Wendy. Gripping the covers, Wendy felt conflicted, her anxiety not totally leaving her just yet. There was no way a few well-meant words would rid her of her worries, but she wanted it. It would mean the world to her if they could be an actual team. I. I want that, she whispered. It afforded her security, companionship and warmth like a family, a much closer bond than the one she shared with her fellow guild members in Kate's shelter. Even if she had her misgivings, Carla was right. Teammates had to look out for each other. There was no way she could protect them if she remained like this a foolish child to be coddled. Ultimately, they couldn't keep using Naruto as a crutch. A time would come when it was his turn to rely on them. No matter what, she had to learn to stand up on her own two feet. She was going to know, she had to get stronger. For them. Wendy had started crying again, but she was smiling too. I really want that. Naruto laughed, reaching out to tousle her hair. It didn't help her resolve to no longer be seen as a child, but she left it alone. It felt nice. Honestly, Carla said, sighing. She hopped down from her lap to return to her previous position under the covers. Now, get some rest, Wendy. They're going to discharge you in a few hours, and you're going to need it. We've all had a very tiring day and I, for one, am exhausted. Soon, a brief silence descended on the room before Wendy spoke up, Ah, Naruto. What? You're, sleep you're sleeping on my leg. Naruto propped his arms up on the bed, half-lidded eyes staring down at the sheets in confusion. Am I? Well, I can't help it. Maybe you're getting kinda big, Wendy. Despite being heavily medicated, she kicked out against the covers. Ow. Naruto. 
he felt someone prod his arm. Groggily, he opened his eyes to find Minori hovering above him, her body bent over the backrest of her incredibly comfy couch. He leaned back into his pillow, putting some distance between them. Minori? He asked sleepily. What? What time is it? The witch was dressed in a gray sweatshirt that was several sizes too big for her and figure-hugging tights. She had her long hair tied back in a loose bun. It was odd seeing her dress so casually. Even last night, when she wore those pajamas with those ducks, he had wisely kept that opinion to himself. Just after six. Come on, I need to talk to you. Not here. She gestured to the door. Outside. Minori left before he could say anything. Naruto buried his face back into the pillow, groaning, then reluctantly made to follow after her. When he stepped outside, the sun made itself his mortal enemy as he shielded his eyes from its glare. It didn't help that Minori's apartment had an unblocked view of the sea. Still, she had an incredible view from her doorsteps. Over here, Minori called out to him. He made his way down to her. You made me come out here to run with you. He asked, finally noticing the shoes she had on. Minori frowned at him. I went to my guild just now and saw Mistress Agatha again. And? She received reports about the ruckus you pulled at the bar near the harbor. They knew it was you. You're kinda famous now. Minori pursed her lips further, narrowing her eyes at him. It wasn't a smart thing to do, Naruto. Is that where you left yesterday to clear your head? Naruto, Naruto laughed, messing up his bed hair. Was that what this was about? Yeah, I know it wasn't the smartest thing I could have done. To be fair, I was angry. He snorted, scowling. Why? Did he lodge a complaint against me or something? Minori massaged her forearms, obviously troubled. It made Naruto do a double take. He's dead, Naruto. That sobered him up. What? They found him an hour ago. A couple of fishermen pulled him out of the harbor, near the bar. I didn't see the body, but I heard he was cut up pretty badly, she explained. The rune knights came to the guild asking questions about the mission, us, you in particular. They were quite interested in you. Look, he was alive when I left the bar, and I've been with you guys ever since we left the clinic. You can't think that. Jeez, Naruto. The purple-haired girl shook her head. Of course, I know it wasn't you and I told them that. Mistress Agatha thinks it was his crew that did it. She laughed spitefully, it sounded strange on her lips. They stripped him clean, took his jewels, valuables, and that damn boat of his that was stranded out near the docks. I'm not sure how they managed to get it moving when their mast was broken. She sighed. Oh, he already gave you the reward money, right? Naruto blinked, stiffening. He resisted the urge to reach for the man's jewels in his pockets. It wasn't like Saab had given him the reward willingly. Yeah, he did. There was an uncomfortable pause. Um. He heard her say, her voice hesitant. Do you think he died because of me? You? What does this have anything to do with you? She was fidgeting with the end of her sweatshirt, wriggling the fabric restlessly. I cursed him, remember? Back at the bar? Before the mission? Does your magic work that way? Could it really kill someone? I don't know. Maybe. He held, he held her by the shoulders to calm her down. Relax. You met the guy. You can only imagine the sort of company he keeps for his crew. And he said it himself, didn't he? They killed their previous captain just because he was a smart ass? If your magic really did play a part in it, and I'm not saying it did, it would have just been a matter of time before someone he knows tried to do something to him. He's not exactly the nicest guy around. Her shoulders sagged. I keep telling myself not to lose too much sleep about it. I mean, I hated that bastard. He was a pig, but I didn't want him dead. What was the point in wanting him dead anyway? P. 
People like him come and go like the wind. There's always someone else out there to take his place, she said, whispering the next part, I'm sure someone already has. And that hatred, that monstrous hatred, will eventually give rise to a new pain. It stunned him into a stupor. It had all but reaffirmed his father's words. Kinda like a never-ending cycle of hatred? Minori eyed him strangely, finding herself mulling over his words. Yeah, I guess you can say it like that. She looked away, staring out into the horizon. You're a pretty deep guy, huh? Nah, I'm not. It's just what a great man once said to me. He told me I had to end that cycle of hatred for good. That sounds, hard. Minori made a face. Are you sure he wasn't just saying it figuratively? The blonde shook his head, smiling at his female companion. I really think he wants me to finish what he started. All right, if you say so. Minori sighed again. Crooks and thieves, they lead such colorful lives, she said. Thanks, Naruto. I... I needed to hear that. Naruto didn't know why the girl had come to him in the first place. Didn't she have anyone to talk to back at her guild? Someone she was closer with? He chose not to question it so much. Oh, guess what? Minori said suddenly. The people around the docks gave you a nickname after seeing you in the last mission. Really? Yeah. She started giggling into her hand. You're the god among seamen. Seeing his puzzled look, she asked again, G get it? Get what? It sounds awesome. She burst out laughing, drawing curious stares from passersby. Seriously? I'll let you sit on it and think, Naruto. There's a dirty joke in there somewhere. She turned around, her face still red from laughter. By the way, you're planning to stay here for another two days, right? Yeah, why? No reason, I just thought you might like to know that she's got a new bodyguard for her cafe for the next two days. She started jogging in place. No buts, she told him happily. I'm not gonna have you be a bum and lays around my house while Wendy recovers. Oh come on. You know how that woman gets around me. Minori ignored him and started her run. Can't hear you. I'll come around when our shift starts later. You better not run away. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.